Craig, good evening. Welcome to the Modus Super Series ahead of a night of Group B that threatens to excite. We've got five fantastic throwers all in action for you over the next few hours. And this is what's coming up. Just going to quickly. Patrick van den Bugard finished third in Group A with his wins across the three days evenly weighted. The mechanisms of Group B could play into his favour. Wesley Plazier finished second in Group A. Will the weight of expectation bear on his shoulders in Group B, or can he be the master like he was in Assen back in December? Richard North lost out in the final last time, defeated by a brilliant Luke Littler in the finale 4-0. He provided some excellence in that Saturday night, including this 1-2-6 against Alexander Merckx. Mike Gillett was a weekly winner last time, beating Cam Crabtree to claim a Champions Week place. Can he go back to back with that week he winning in week 11? Gary Stone has hit the post so many times here in the past. Is this the moment for him to shine at the Super Series? Yeah, fantastic line that we've got for you over the next couple of hours. We're going to be watching it in the company of the free time Lakeside champion. Glenn Dunn is with us up here on the balcony. Before we look ahead to the Group B action we're going to see over the next couple of hours, let's begin by reflecting back on what we saw this afternoon because that was the beginning of Group C here at the Super Series and it really could not be any tighter at the top of the table. Four players all tied on six points at the top of it. It is headlined by Jared Cole and Justin Hood but well everybody's had a different kind of story on day one uh, a very strange group C uh, to say the least no one really grabbed it by the scruff of the neck to be fair and I think so many players are in with the running tomorrow but I don't think anyone went back to their hotel room tonight feeling very pleased and I think Jared Cole will be very surprised the way he played that he sat in top position in some senses well tomorrow will we get six players that will almost get the hump a little bit and play better because of it. I think so, yeah. I think, you know, it's going to be really exciting for the neutral. That's really important. And maybe when it means so much, that's when we'll see the averages and some of the games really increase today. It was, a, it was quite disappointing at times. And considering someone like Justin Hood was virtually playing on one leg for most of the day and is still sat joint top. It was a, a strange old day and all to play for tomorrow. So that is going to be our action. That resumes at one o'clock tomorrow afternoon on the Super Series YouTube channel before going back live on Sports Stuff TV from free. Well, tonight it is all about Group B. And what a cast list we have for you, as we explained a little bit earlier on in the evening session. that The headline act is going to be Gary Stone. It's reflected as far as the bookmakers' odds are concerned this evening. He has been here so many times before he's come so close so many times before but now he'll feel like he wants to get that weekly win yeah he seems a very mature as well gary stone which is a little bit different he's the class act for me and we're talking about the world master that's in place there as well um, but gary stone is someone when i saw the group he's the kind of person i was look, looking forward to seeing how he plays and rightfully his favorite patrick van der boog harder at nine to one that's surely too big, isn't it? Yeah, technically, what a beautiful player. Uh, really was someone I was seeing up close and personal for the first time and so many positives. And if he can keep playing the way he is, because his big problem was, Henry, is just at the end of legs, I think the fact that he hasn't had as much match sharpness was just beginning to show a real beautiful throw, very silky, very elegant. He impressed me a lot. Could that potentially be the same question labelled at Wigeon? I know he plays a lot of local stuff. We haven't seen him as much on the, maybe like the challenge tours as we have done in recent times. Richard North? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Are you going to win it tonight, Richard North? He went, Glenn, I'm Richard North. Of course I'm going to win it. You're going to see personality. You're going to see confidence. He's a character, and that's what you needed, Darts. And he's, I'm a big fan of Richard North. And again, the, 
the room next door to us where the players are is just a little bit noisier than normal. Yeah, Richard North, one of the real characters within the sport. I actually spoke to Richard earlier on tonight about the infamous tweet he sent about him, well, him winning a TV major title. And he said, if he wins this week, tell Mark Webster this counts as his TV title that he tweeted about all those years ago. Right, let's get into the bet builder then for the evening session. It's a treble that pays just under 10 to 1 this evening. And that is because there's some big and bold bets in there. Yeah, like I said, I don't think I agree with all of these. I mean, the handicap bet and Wesley Plazier is playing on the a night session now. I don't think we really saw the best of him in Group A. I'm going to see how he reacts by playing, maybe at a little bit of a later time. Uh, and people out there certainly think he's going to beat Mike Gillett. Again, a very close game between Gillett and North. Very interesting, two friends, and they expect that to go 4-2. So that's going to be a really interesting one. And North at the end was a very strange decision. But that's Patrick Van den Bogaard at a win with a handicap as well. So no wonder that's 9-4. to four. Can't say I fancy that. That is the bet builder, 18 plus, b If you're going to have a flutter on that. Just quickly on Mike Gillett. No one's spoken about him yet, yet... The last time he was here, he made it to Champions Week. I thought it was one of the real success stories as well. It was a very good group that he won. And I have been speaking to him tonight for a good 20 minutes. Very softly spoken, very well spoken, very clean living. And, uh, you know, sometimes you just want people to do well. And Mike is that kind of guy. He's just a, a really nice person and good luck to him. Well, we'll see him a little bit later on in the evening. But our first centre of attention revolves around Gary Stone, the favourite to go on and win the group. In fact, it's the favourite and the outsider going toe-to-toe -to -toe in our first game of the evening because he's taking on Patrick van den Buharder in our first game here in Group B, where Glenn Dunn is going to make the little trip down the stairs into the commentary box where he's going to be joined by Primetime himself for some Primetime darts. Good evening, Matthew Raker. Thank you, Henry. Good evening, everyone joining us. For the beginning of Group B action, we will know tomorrow night our full lineup. But we have a whole full new group ready to begin. Kicking us off, the favourite, the 42 year old from Scotland, Gary Stone, a man who's been playing a lot of darts over on the WDF tour at the moment. Picked up a Romanian classic title back in Let's January of this year. First. Been very good, Game on. consistent. Around the international circuit, been playing over in Denmark, Ireland, Hungary, to great success. 100. Been doing some very interesting things on the ADC as well. He's been posting some big averages, over 100 for quite a lot of his games, really finding some big local competitive practice. And 58. that's why he comes here as quite a sizable favourite really when you look at this group but he's going to have his hands full here against Patrick van den Bohard who was seen here Monday, Tuesday and Wednesday taking part in Group A action one thing I can say about Patrick when you're looking at his averages across Monday, Tuesday and Wednesday is there's a level of consistency 58 yeah it was a real pleasure to see but consistency is good but when you want to start sort of winning competitions, you've got to have that real X factor about yourself. And the guy in your picture certainly has that. I don't know if you've touched on it already as I've come down. But if it goes anything bad, the practice starts, then Gary Stone just give him the trophy now because we had the privileged position just while they were warming up maybe an hour or so, two hours 92. ago. And I think his lowest score was 140. But it's different when it's match on. But I still expect very big things. He's talking very confidently. Uh, One out of them, 40. The kind of player I think is underachieving. I think he should be a professional dart player. I think he's that good. You know, he's only been playing since 2010. A real late start as well, Matt. But I think this 45. is the week. Gary Lecar, 141. It's time to step up the level here at the Motor Super Series. Played weeks with 55. Gary Stone before and watched quite a lot of his games. He does have this sort of explosive nature that for two, three legs, he can rattle it off and put any opponent away here. Yeah, but he needs to learn to sort of win ugly as 58. well. You can win with your B game. Gary Lucar, 86. You know, very, very early. He's on his B and C game here. But as long as he's getting points under the belt, he doesn't have to have 100 46. average every time he throws at the game. So, you know, if I was working with Gary, it's, you know, sometimes his biggest enemy, Matt, is, is himself. And uh, like I said, if you just learn to win, 
the rest will look after itself. 174. As someone who's played 40. in these groups with him before, I can vouch for that 100%. You know, things are going well when he starts 35. getting on his own back, which Come we may see quite 16. early if he doesn't bring that level that we've been speaking about, because he came here full of confidence, and rightly so, because everything backed him up. Yeah, it's very important as well, never to be out of a leg, and that 174 from Patrick. Just made Gary Stone Being think. shot on the first leg. Patrick Van den Boer. Seeing him, Patrick Van den Boer harder play for the first time. He's technically sound. He scores very big. His weakness was just at the back end of the legs. He was times very like early. He was first, missing an awful lot of doubles. But he hasn't been as prolific on the dartboard as recent years. In fact, around about 2019, you know, he was representing his country and actually played in a European tour as well. So he's got the pedigree. 82. He just seems to be warming into this event. Very close friends with Wesley Plazier as well. So I did expect Gary to win the game. 58. He'd be disappointed with those missed doubles. And Patrick has the ascendancy right now. It is interesting when you think of it in the different ways because I sit here now and I think, oh, Gary got 96. broken in the opening leg. I can tell you, when you're on that stage and you go onto it with confidence, when someone breaks through your first leg, you just go, oh, well, 57. it doesn't matter. I will get it back. And I feel like Gary will probably have that attitude. You could go two and they're down here and you'd think, oh, well, it's only two legs. I've just started a little bit slowly. It's only when you're not playing well, I think you start to get into that 85. reading the game sort of pattern. I think what makes it interesting, Matt, as well, is not to underestimate Patrick Van den Boharder, I think. He was the outsider. It's the favourite versus the outsider here, but I wouldn't actually say that. I think the biggest problem players can have is not to underestimate this guy because that is a really beautiful throw. 100. Sometimes he can just push it just a little bit too hard. He's got full control of this match so far, and this will be a shock to the system, Gary. 134. Patrick Carr, 138. We've about his maturity and... How he's getting better as the years go along, and he might need all that right now. Should be leaving a two dart or at least on one three eight. Eighty three. That last dart is an absolute beauty. Forty four. Patrick O'Carr, fifty five. Nice start for Gary. Unexpected slow start, it has to be said. Patrick, just 55 points away from doubling his lead. That is a slip. That's only just in as well. And this is the right thing to do. When you have an edgy dart, don't just rush straight into the next one and end up pulling it low. Just give this the full Rob Cross. 47. Gary O'Carr, 153. Yeah, I'll give him 7, 8 out of 10 for full as aspects of his game. But when it gets down to the... Set up and finishing on the double. It's a case of much do better for Patrick, especially if he has aspirations of being here Saturday night. Gary can't finish. 97. I don't Patrick anticipate can't Patrick to miss, but once again, this game is going to be close to 19, 20, 21 darts. Not what I expected. Game shot on the second leg. Patrick van den Boogard. Patrick will be more than happy the way this one is going so far. He's not had to raise his game. He's actually playing below the standards he's set so himself across the first, first three days off. of action. But it's got to be said, this has been a successful campaign, really, for Patrick van den Bohard to, to say he's in a Group 90, B campaign seven. because that would have mean he was in the second and third positions from a Group A. Yeah, it's reminiscent of Benito van der Pass and Sven Verdonk who come to the Moda Super Series, not as fresh, not as... That match play 81. experience, they weren't playing as much darts. And, and to be fair to Sven and Ben, it was a bit of a disaster, whereas Patrick can go with his held a, head held high, whatever happens. He's been 101. absolutely superb. And it might just give him that real impetus to get his darts out again and you know get back playing regularly because that is just, for me, I don't know what you think, Matt. I've spoke a lot about that, but I really like the whole balance, 100. the non-throwing arm, the flick of the wrist. The follow through with a dart. I think he's got everything. 57. Fine tuning required. 
And a lot of that can be done on a practice board with the right routines, with the right level of purpose. Yes, yeah, we'll look at that side of you. Hey, Next one, if we can get a one of Patrick from the front, because have a look at Gary's feet there from the front view. We'll try and get that in the next one. 45. So I, this is where Matt's been sort of working with me as well. So see how his front foot and back foot are together. I've been trying to work and then watch where Gary's back foot is. So it's all part of your balances on that front foot there. And that just looks so 65. good. And that's why I think there's not a lot of body movement. And I've been working on trying to get my foot here to the right hand side of that front foot. The balance just works, and Gary's finally found the trebles. 177. Very reminiscent of the setup Patrick there that Patrick's done in leg one. But this would hurt. You'll feel it's a bit of a freebie. It's against the darts. And now Gary Stone will want to get his campaign up and running. 55. Gary O'Carr, 24. Just signs of that confidence. I said he could go two or down. He won't be panicking. He'll still feel like the winner in this one. Game shot on the third leg. Gary Stone. Last start in hand. Won't fill him with confidence, but I think he brought the confidence here. I don't think he needs the dartboard to tell him. And that's sometimes you see people come into this sort of arena and they first. need the Game board on. to give them the confidence rather than it be the hockey side of the throw. Yeah, Gary Stone's always someone that likes 99. to have someone with him in the arena, whether it's a, a BDO competition, a WDF, or elsewhere. But he's totally on his own in this competition. One out of them, him 40. And that dartboard is just beginning to show signs why we built him up so much. But I'm glad the game's going this way because I want to see him win him with a C game. I'm trying to get through to him that you can 99. be your brilliant best every time. And to scrape a 4-3 victory that sometimes you don't feel you deserved. But you just show that little bit of bottle at the end. Because this is what you can do. 40. You can score big. We spoke a lot about this week, haven't we? The performance over results mentality that people get 43. caught up in. And maybe we're partly to blame for that. We bang on the stats about quite a lot and... We've got our stat screens and numbers. 96. The only thing the players need to worry about is that legs column. Get that to four. Get the points. Points make pounds. Pounds make, well, I was going to say. Prizes. Prizes will do. We'll go with prizes. I, uh, I used to play 56. a Super League. And Got your car, before the final dart went in, I would say that was a 27-33 average. An obsession. Triple 17, maybe. We should really go down to treble 19. That's a beautiful set up there. So for two legs running. And that's what I used to work on. Round about that 201 mark, that 151 mark. If you can just make it so you're setting up well, giving yourself opportunities. And this 58. is for the 13th. Darty's just beginning to get into his stride now. And I have Game to go back to the what fourth Matt Gary alluded Stone. to there. I think a Gary Storm Matt of a couple of years ago would have panicked the 2-0 down. But I think you... Absolutely nailed it by saying there was no panic. He is full of confidence. And even two nil first, down, game on. Panic didn't set in, and that's fair play to him. One hundred and thirty-one. This is just how you've just got to assess different players at times because that situation where a different player or Gary Stone in a different time of this year, maybe it would have been what we were saying and. One it was a problem 40. to go behind and get that breaker throw confirmed, but not Gary Stone coming here on the 20th of July. 100. Just beginning to warm up nicely this game. The averages are rising. Patrick, just when he usually throws one just round about there, you expect a 140. He'd be disappointed 100. once again, a third dart. He has a bit of shoulder coming into it there. Surprised he went down, but I guess when you look at that first dart, I would have criticised him if he stayed there. So, chance here for the Dutchman. He's in a no-win situation there, was he? Gary Stone so just decided for the open target and backed himself once again. 
to hit the two trebles. Again, a sign of confidence. He's not trying to force the issue, which, like you 42. say, you criticise people this Patrick week. Patrick 164. Trying to play through a demonstration of how he's feeling. And right now, Patrick van den Boerhaarder is once again proving everybody wrong. Very sensible. Absolute board management at his best. A lot of the chat has been about Gary Stone. And Patrick van den Boerhaarder is just sticking his hands up to the commentary team and saying... 60. Excuse me, I'm still in this game and double 16 here. He becomes a big favourite because he will have the dart in the next leg to take a surprising victory. Game shot on the fifth leg. Patrick van den Boogard. Well, it's one leg away now. That's a fantastic last start there from Patrick. I was starting to think he was never going to get around those. A little shuffle to the right really opened up the bed. Six leg Patrick to throw first. Game on. I like what he did there as well. Putting down the darts. Sometimes you get a little bit of water on the outside of the glass. Yeah, he's done nothing. The first three darts on Monday night. Seen a lot of people have their own little idiosyncrasies with a dart and 41. touching photos or putting the darts on a certain angle. It meant Sazulovic, yellow classic. They were the first people I sort of see do 58. that. 58. So it's a routine he plays. And do you know, he's a big favourite now. That's where I like his dart. 61. He's not capitalising. You expect Gary to kick in any time. 95. I don't know about you, but there's just a bit of added pace there, so he's really working on his game, but only about 50 in it. So you want the treble to go in, so now whatever he hits now is in front. 125. Perfect dart in the board there for Gary Stone. It's just so one teasing. Out of one of the things that's quite unusual about Gary Stone, someone who has a dart that sits up at this slight angle, that first dart there was perfect for him, as that dart would be perfect for him as well. But if he goes just underneath the treble, I'm not sure if it's to do with the shape of dart, because he's not got 85. the most traditional shaped barrel, but he can just power past that dart. It doesn't affect him too much when it just drops a bit low. 58. Yeah, but when you say power it through, then and I think he loses that little bit of finesse that I think he has with a throw when he's at his best. Just a little bit of touch of panic is obviously going to set in here because this would be a shock to the system to lose this game. 99. Once again, the last really hurt players. And there's that just that little flick rather than the smoothness that we saw at the beginning. 26. Patrick O'Connor, 90. Is there a Possible statement here that maybe Gary's underestimated this man. I think we said that from day one. It's two darts, a double 15 for the match. Game and that the match. is an Patrick absolute Bannon quality Mugan. finish in a big 4-2 victory. He was labelled the underdog in that game against the heavy favourite in Gary Stone. He's the one that come with a reputation, but Patrick Van der harder has done what he's done all week. Reputations mean nothing. He is up and running. A surprising start. But a big start for the Dutchman. And next up to big game. They're all big games tonight. It's Mike Gillett against Wesley Plazier.
Hello, everyone. Welcome back to the Moda Super Series. So before the break, the group, the group favourite Patrick Van den Buharder, uh, sorry, the group favourite Gary Stone was beaten by Patrick Van den Buharder by four legs to two. Both players averaging 81 in that one, but it was Patrick that got over the line. Next up for us, it is a battle between the Netherlands and Wales as Wesley Plazier, the reigning World Masters champion, takes on a man who won week 11 of the last series. Mike Gillett watching this one in the commentary box. It's Glenn and Matt. Thank you so much, Henry. Yes, will it be 11 time? Lucky again for Mike Gillett. I really enjoyed his win in the last series. One of them series where he finished third. First leg is Mike to throw first. He just scraped his way through with a Saturday night. And Game on. Somehow got there and just had that famous win for himself. And he was absolutely over the moon. He was kissing the board at the end. And you know, it was really nice to meet him tonight. Very softly spoken, very humble, just... A genuinely nice guy. 100. And uh, he sort of left the commentary box. I thought he hopes he does really well tonight against this guy. If you haven't been with us on the Motor Super Series this week, he comes with a really big reputation. 140. The current WDF World Master, but just done some real damage as well on the European Tour in the PDC. Beat some fantastic players as well. 83. And was a surprise to me and my co-commentator, Matthew Edgar, that he didn't get his... A professional card at Q Skill. We did identify some weaknesses in his game. 16. An awful lot of rotation at the top of that body. And if he doesn't get that timing right, you can understand when he's coming across the dart. And yeah, I think there's still areas of improvement there, but a real 100. talent. Is he going to show that tonight? Because I would have only given him a 6 out of 10 as a rating from Group 8. And I think he could do a lot better. And Maybe playing on the night as well is going to help. 140. It's not even like there's much of a pattern as well with Wesley Plazier. Sometimes you can say a player's got better or worse as the action's gone on for Wesley. We just don't know. 100. Wesley Car 161. He's like the big dipper at Blackpool. One hundred and thirty seven. Michael Carr looks like it means more business now. We were waiting for him to click. But Mike Gillett only needs the one treble. Be disappointed with that because you've got to give yourself a chance. And he hasn't forty four funny all set up, which maybe Wesley Carr twenty four. Matt to assess the funny darts and then stands with so much better from Blazy. This is what I was hoping to see with him. Like I said, I think the expectation is that we were expecting hundred averages with Every leg of darts that he threw and, you know, had some beatings Second from John Henderson and then would Game beat on. John Henderson, lost to Patrick Van den Boharder twice. And I just think it was a case of uh, he got to group B. 97. Now I think it's time to shine. 96. Mike Gillett is out there on the 96. WDF circuit, travelling around Europe, collecting the points. He does have enough points to live out one of his dreams, which was to play at Lakeside. He will be there 100. this year in December. Something he is really looking forward to and really trying to build up and prepare for. He's had some good results across 96. Italy, Slovakia, Scotland, Denmark, Sweden, Spain, Romania, Northern Ireland, Switzerland. 96. This man... Has got some air miles. Yeah, you're bringing sort of back memories for me as well on the video circuit. The, some of the names, Northern Ireland was my first ever 100. big win. Sweden was a fabulous competition, but I'm hoping to take myself to Iceland Open next year with my co commentator. I talk so much about how well that competition was run. These Scandinavian countries now, uh, I think one day they'll be producing someone of real magic. So passionate about their darts as well out there. 100. They're doing it right. They're doing it how we should be doing it. Options on 108. So treble 17 for double 18. This is quality. This would be for a 15 dart. 90. Mike Ricard, 109. The first chink in the armour there for Mike Gillett. He won't want to slide into a small number this time. So it's treble 19. 54. What's the car? 18. 
Game shot on the second leg. Wesley Plus here. He's picking up where I'm picking up that he means a bit more business in this group B. You think he's just enjoying the fact that it's played on a night? Third leg, Mike, to throw first. Game on. It's probably when he's most used to playing 59. his dance. Think about like Dutch Super League that'll be played on an evening. 45. I, I, I don't want to correct you, but I think they're playing a Sunday afternoon and they reckon it's absolutely fantastic. I sat with Jermaine and what I mean for many years and you know when you're qualifying 68. for the Dutch national team and doing well in that competition and I was surprised to see how many sort of Dutch and Belgium's obviously it's clearly on the border. But I know Andy Barton's will play in that competition. I thought he was, I think he's playing as well as anybody. Andy Barton's at the moment in the amateur system. I was in a bar in The Hague. There was eight darts all dotted around this venue in one big room. And in the evening, all eight dartboards had a match playing. That's how much darts and competition there is in the Hague. And people that were playing in this local bar, Dirk van Dijvenbode, Jeffrey Deswan, big name players just coming in and playing in these local events. The standard was insane. 47. If there's one person I love talking to around for the 90s experience, someone like Tony O'Shea, Daryl Fitton, they would go over to Holland for three weeks, four weeks worth of exhibitions. We're fanatical about the 56. game. You get that sense of in Germany now, in Poland, and sort of them countries, in Czech Republic. It's just getting bigger and bigger, isn't it? See, Holland was the 100. first big European country. Then Germany. I'm seeing the same development now in Belgium. Belgium is going to be massive. 100. Might for darts and viewing figures very soon. Is it going to be double five or is it going to be the bolt? It's double 80. five. Where's the new car? 80. Just sit above that. He's going to get a tart of tops for a 3 nil lead. I like the fact he's taking his time. Game shot on the third leg. Where's you have a look at the preparation when you go up for a double. Just have a quick look at that 80 finish there. I don't think we were seeing that so much on group here from Wesley Plazier. It just all seemed a little lethargic. As if he wasn't enjoying the experience. Was the first game even on. a situation where he was yawning at the end of the session as well. I just think we're beginning. This was what we wanted to see from Wesley. And he's all of a sudden we're seeing 83. the best from him. Mike Gillett at the moment not really been able to land a big blow. 45. Let's take a look at the big score stats. He's landing a couple of jabs. He's not yet put anything in those big hitting columns, which is why he's only got one dart or a double so far in this match. Yeah, we talked how tough this group B is, but we haven't had a 180 yet. It usually means one thing when I see it, that Wesley will walk up now and smash one in, but we're yet to see a 180 tonight. Let me down, Wes. 100. I've been avoiding Wesley all week, haven't I? I won't be cracking that joke no more. What is that? There it is. Hey. You were just a throw too late was... and you picked the wrong person, which is normally how Duzzer predicts things. Whenever Duzzer gives you a tip, 81. back the opposite. Ninety-nine. Where's the your car? One hundred and three. Great camera angles. You can see the way the darts are going. Double sixteen for the match. Eighty-seven. Mike your car seventy-eight. You have to feel this must go. His opponents look really good today. Can he replicate what Wesley Game shot did? On the Absolutely fourth Mike can, Gillett. because that's what Mike Gillett does. You give him a sniff at a double, he'll take it. 
Fifth leg Mike to throw first. Game on. Mike just shy of that 90 average. And Wesley has been peppering around about the 100 mark for the majority of this game. But that's what hurts. You get a fantastic finish and then you throw three darts like that and your Wesley would be all over this. You would fail. 125. Great recovery there as well after opening with a five. You tend to find that bad darts can become contagious. You sort of get drawn into a battle of who snaps 95. out on it first. Wesley plays, you're having none of it. Sixty. Just beginning to find that treble twenty bed mat. Ninety nine. Any thoughts of them darts? They're a bit odd, aren't they? And it's weird because they sort of like taper backwards. A lot of people have like tapered the opposite way. They were like an upside down dart. Eighty. It's like a 1970s dart you go down the fairground at. There they are, there, as you can see. They seem to get fatter as the dart goes down the barrel. They do land nice and flat there, as you can see from that angle. And a lot of that could be to do with that flight setup as well. I'm not 60. a. 60. I'm too much of a traditionalist, are not But Wesley's just beginning to slow down. If Mike can just creep this leg. He said he's dropping low himself, but there he's back in again. 100. This is where, if Wesley can find a 140, puts himself firmly in the driving seat. That's 100. Always nice when Michael you find Carl, one of those couple of treble combinations to leave a single dart for the double. So we'll go downstairs. Another one of them would be nice. It's bullseye for 3-2. 101. Was that his What's chance? Your car 76. You feel Wesley Plazzi is going to get a dart or a double. Or will it be two? Or will it be any? 71 left. He'd be disgusted with that dart. 36. Mike Ricard, 25. A hint of frustration, rightly so. You'd have expected at least a dart. Maybe about to lose another leg. Seventeen. What's your car? Forty. You can see what he thinks of that. But for Wesley Plazia, started off this match very, very nicely. Looked really comfortable in the circumstances. He's just dipped away at the end, and you can see his frustration. He'll want to put this away. He'll want to get away from the mismatch as soon as possible. 35. But it's not going to happen Michael just yet. Mike Gillett, a school teacher, could be singing off the Paul Nicholson Super Series lesson sheet. Paul Nicholson says, win big. If you're going to lose, lose small. No score. What's for your car? Well, the term I would use for that, and I think Paul Nicholson would agree, would be unlucky. The eighth time at the board. It's two darts, a double two. Game. It was a Shot little bit the ugly Wesley at the Plazier. end. It's Wesley Plazier that wins 4-1. It's a great start to his Group B campaign. And Mike Gillett, who we just think, and must do better. It's the Dutchman that takes the two points. Nothing to really write home there about, just very solid in the end. I think he'd be disappointed with the way the conclusion, but he's underway. It's two points. And next up, we see Richard North, the character against Gary Stone. That's up after this short break.
Welcome back to the Moto Super Series. Where we have gone double Dutch so far tonight as Wesley Plazier gets the better of Mike Gillett by four legs to one. Right, next up for us, it is Richard North in action for the first time this evening. He takes on Gary Stone in the commentary box for this one. Matt Edgar and Glenn Durrant. Thank you so much, Henry. Yeah, I didn't expect to be sat here so far thinking, Gary Stone will be thinking, I must get a win here. Expected him to breeze past his first game, but he didn't because once again we underestimated Patrick van den Boharder. And now he's up against first a real Richard, to throw Richard first. North. A man who exudes confidence. And a very, very good player. I'm going to be honest, I'm glad I'm watching Richard North throw some darts tonight. 140. Because for the first time I don't have to hear him talking. The player's room is on the other side of the wall. And normally, we don't hear too much. But he's got one of them voices that really travel. I've heard every word he's been saying for the last, well, I think about six hours he's been here by the sounds of it. Yeah, I walked into the venue. Was like, How are you going to do, Richard? He went, I'm Richard North. I'm going to win it. I think he went, what a, what a heck have I just said to Glenn there? As I was like, 60. Remember the worst one? It was in Germany. We got in a minibus going to one of the European 45. tour events. And I got in the back of it. And they pulled the seats back. Richard North jumped in the back with me. And then I was trapped for about two and a half hours. Was on 80. One hundred and thirty four. This is a bit of the night that I really enjoy. Because once we watch Richard North play oh, that would have been some conversion. Ninety eight. Richard Ocar one hundred and twenty two. We've seen the winner of the week. Because everybody would have played at least a match. That's the easy bit. But who is going to be the winner? Forty two. Gary Ocar seventy two. You'll stay there. It's a dart of tops. 52. Once again, when he's Richard dragging Rukai, low. 80. I just go on. He will be feeling it. Options here for North. And like I said, I talk about his character. Don't be surprised if it's tops, tops. Just want to kiss that barrel. So he's aiming for the total left-hand side. So he's got to decide the left-hand side of that tops or the right-hand side. 40. And in the end, Gary was, was, 20. You feel that was a bit of a hit and hope, don't you? No score. Richard Yukar, 40. Opportunity there for Gary Stone to really get his night going. And he's pulled it into the wrong bed. Richard North would have been very happy with that. He's a big fan of tops. Getting shot on the first leg. Richard Even North. bigger so now. You say about him being a character. I remember last time he was here, he was playing Luke Littler on a Saturday night and Luke Littler went up Second and he, had a bad visit. he scored like 26 or a 7 or something. He gave it an ironic way. North, he gave him a fist bump for it. 91. Normally, what you do at the end of someone in a 9 dart or a 170. Yeah, he's full of confidence. Obviously, I'm good friends with Chris Dolby and I think uh, they like each other's company. 121. He did say he was going to win a major, didn't he? Then he tell Mark Webster. I think his get out is he said TV title. And again, he's told a lot of people a lot of things. Big fan of his movies. 177. Sort of things in his life are worth 140. Food, darts and movies. It's pretty much about. Happy day there for Richard North. He won't be happy with that, though. Great recovery. 57. Yeah, when you bring your arm back as far as he does, it's a real long pull back there. Sometimes that dark can go in on a bit of a side angle as well. It doesn't look smooth, confident, Gary's. 
100. Not the start he thought he was going to get, but he's fighting hard. North is in good shape here, you feel. Certainly is now. We'll be looking at treble 17. 81. Gary O'Carr, 127. Just not happening for the big favourite, is it? Not at all. Wasn't even able to stay straight there. 75. Opening Richard dart. O'Carr, 65. And Richard North's the sort of player that can jump in and punish. This will be a breaker throw. And then he'll be thrown for 3 0. Gary Stone could be in big trouble here. He's got the 25. It is in Richard. Two darts at tops. We know his love for tops. Game shot on the second leg. That's Richard exactly North. the same spot. And once again, Gary Stone is right up against it right now because if Northy gets up and running, he's a very tough person to catch. He's great like front runner. Like said, he's Game full on. of confidence. Backs his ability. And darts aren't going in. 93. Totally correctly. He's had a couple of bounce outs. 44. You just feel if Gary Stone's going to get through this group now, Matt, it's going to might be after the hard way. I suppose it doesn't matter what position you finish in, as long as you get through. Although, I say that, and I've always said that when I've sat in this chair, that it's just about getting through these groups if you're third, first or third. However... Cast your mind back 12 weeks ago when I actually played in this. I played in a Group B. The only thing I ever thought about was winning the group. Even when I was already qualified, I want to win the 60. group. Such a different thought pattern to logic and playing darts. 55. Fifty-four, just a little bit jerky. You wouldn't think that was the case because he's two 0 up. Maybe he's just waiting for this guy to come back at him. Some One people don't like front running. Some people get more nervous being in front than any other position. Just looks a bit fidgety. I mean, I know that's his personality as well. That looked a lot better, a lot smoother. And for Gary, he's literally. Three or four millimetres under the treble 20 bed every time. And he's left what I think is one of the worst finishes on the dartboard. He might not get a shot at it anyway. 69. The Gary reason O'Carr I hate this shot is because even if you get a treble with the first dart, you still feel you're a long way off. It might only be a dart at the ball. In some cases, you're happier to hit the single 19. 55, Richard Ducar, 18. It's never nice, this. You've got to be aggressive. And when you're too aggressive, Ten. that's what Gary can happen. Ucar, Gary Stone's got away with one here, but he's only going to get one dart or a double. Can he get his campaign up and running? He should Change be 3-0 down, but he isn't. He's 2-1. And that's what quality players do. They just somehow win legs. And Richard North, you can see exactly what he feels about that. Just felt Four that the leg of for Richard, where he should have been really confident. He could see his opponent struggling, but I just felt Richard. Maybe it's his opening game that was surprised. That bit leading, he just didn't look comfortable, did he? This will settle him back in, though. Loads of space to the left hand side. Forty. He's gone from that treble 20 just being under, just beginning to 82. find it. Now we'd be disappointed because that first dart was perfect. You don't have to go back too many years to remember when Richard North was qualifying for events like the World Championship 59. as the number one of the Pro Tour Order of Merit. One hundred. He 
18s on 3 or 2. Just gives you an opportunity. 138. Excellent board management there from Northy. Why do you think he has a nickname, Northy? 60. Richard Ocar, 160. I think it's an ironic thing because he's from the south. You know, like when you get the really big bloke in the bar that you call Tiny. Eighty-four. Gary Ocar, one hundred and twenty-five. He's a big moment in this game. Seventy-five on treble seventeen last time. Ironic. One hundred and one. Richard Ocar, eighty. I've seen him go tops, tops in the past. He's gone back to that route here. Game shot as well. That is, well, you asked me why he's called Northy. I think what happened is he was actually meant to be called Naughty. And his handwriting was a bit scruffy, so they got it wrong. Fifth leg, Richard, to throw first. Because that Game was on. Naughty. That was Naughty darts. Check out with the night so far. They were just clean and clinical. Exactly what he wanted in this situation. And all it means, it means Gary's tightened up again. 45. And that 45, in my opinion, is because of them two darts from North. When you're putting pressure on someone, then all of a sudden, Gary has to be immaculate from here. No more mistakes. He has 41. to win the next three legs. I can actually tell you a funny story about that. What have you done the shirt design going slightly wrong. So when I played in the World Championship, I wanted my dad's name down the side, Malk Edgar. And I wrote it down so my dad's name would be on the shirt. 52. Sent it into the shirt designers. And when I got the shirt back, I picked it up and they went, you put the wrong name down. You are Matt Edgar. And they wrote Matt Edgar on my shirt. Like, not quite what I was asking for. Forward thinking, though. 45. Gary Ocar, 136. This is what the man can do. Game shot on the fifth leg. Is Gary that Stone. the catalyst? Is that the moment? You've still got the fancy Northy. Northy will have the darts in the last leg. What's a beautiful 12 darter from really absolutely Six leg, nowhere. Gary to throw first. Game on. Effortless. Just made it look so easy. He's got one of those sort 82. of actions, hasn't he? That, like an Adrian Lewis, where when they're just on song, it just looks like they're never going to miss. 99. Superb last one from Northy. He's just hanging in there. 100. Gary Stone is dominating the numbers. Ninety-six. Gary Stone has already 59. played one game tonight. That was the opening match. He lost four-two to Patrick Vanden Bohard. He was a one-to-three favourite in that one. Went down four-two. This is the first time we're getting to see Richard North. Eighty-six. Wesley Plazier and Mike Gillett playing our second fixture four-one to Wesley Plazier in that one. One hundred on it. It's third of the match. One hundred. Gary Ocar eighty. Just feel his game speeding up. Sixty. Just goes under. Richard Ocar one hundred and twenty for the match. How many times in his life has he done Shanghai? If he does it, we've seen him go tops, tops. Could we see him go tops, tops, tops? How about just tops? 81. Gary Ocar, 20. That was a match dart. Perilously close to that double 15 again. Just where those barrels are, that was no virtual score. impossibility. Gary Ocar, 39. He tells you exactly what he feels about that. And Richard North take the spoils. Double ten. I have a feeling he was going for the seven there with his reaction. But this is for the match. Gary's given up. Put his darts in his pocket. And that's Richard the reason North. why. Give this man a dart and a double. 
Happy Litton. It's been a very disappointing start. The big favourite, Gary Stone. Fair play to Richard North there. Takes the spoils 4-2. That's the tail of the tape there. Once again, missed doubles from Gary Stone. Plenty of work for him. If he's going to qualify from Group B, he's going to have to do it the hard way. But Richard North is up and running. And next up, the very impressive Patrick van den Boerharder against Mike Gillett.
Welcome back to the Motor Super Series where the group favourite Gary Stone has succumbed to his second straight defeat of the night. 4-2, he's lost to Richard North, who's got off to the perfect start as far as his evening is concerned. Well, next up for us, it is Patrick van der Buhada up against Mike Gillett. Contrasting starts to the night for the pair. Patrick in the winner's enclosure first up against Gary Wise for Mike. It was a defeat to Wesley Plezier to kick off his evening. What's going to happen, though, in their second matches of the night? Let's find out with Glenn and Matt. First Thank you Patrick so much, Henry. First. Yeah, this could be a good game for Mike Gillett, actually. Game I think on. Patrick is, was a surprising win over Gary Stone and will probably go as favourite for this match, but I just think this might come at the right time for Mike because it was a, a tough loss in that first game to Wesley Plaza. It really blew him off the board early 96. doors. He sort of did have chances at the end there. So I, I really see this as a 50-50 game, Matt. I'm with you on that one. We are talking about a weekly winner here in Mike Gillett. 95. And the book is going exactly the same. They're going 10 to 11 and five, uh, 4 to 5. Take your pick. 100. Did you think Mike Gillett was good value at the start of the day? 13 to 2. You think about a player who's won a week before he knows what to do to get the entire job done. And that one is what I like to call a typewriter 180, where it just goes beep, 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 straight across the line. The QWERTY 180. 90. Effectively taken the darts already as Mike. 96. He's just beginning to find those trebles now, just warming to the task nicely. I think we're all in a little bit shock over what's happening with Gary Stone at the moment. I don't think any of us expected that. 100. For the rest of the players, Minor they'll be absolutely delighted because if you get a player that gets detached, then you're looking at three from four. 94. One of the good things though, about the Group B campaign is you're never 150. really out of it. Even if you lose all your matches tonight... I remember David Pallett doing that back in the old venue and he turned it around and ended up qualifying. Double 18. 97. Mike Lucar, 36. For a break, a throw for Gillett. Double 18, just at a nice height for Dar players. A dreaded transition over to double nine. And that's what you figure as you throw. That's what your brain 28. is telling you. Don't Pass hit the nine. Eighteen. Game shot on the first leg. Patrick van den Boogen. Just beginning to impress his Patrick. I've seen every dart he's thrown the same process. At the end puts his darts down. Something like Mike fingers, to throw first, game on. A drink with his non-throwing arms and picks his darts up one by one. Just the same process every time. He then looks down. 83. And starts it. Very good. 90. You'd say that's quite a nice start there for the way he's sitting the board. 41. Able to use them. And this one... Has the feelings it's going to be one of those games that go the distance. 140. Gillett had an opportunity to break in the opening leg. He came down in just 12 darts to leave the double. Scoring phase right on point. 140. 100. 100. Just getting his line in length. A little bit out of sync there, and he really just snapped that last dart, does Patrick? I just see the improvement coming in my gullet now. I think a little bit of belief. He'll be disappointed. Forward fast, disgusted with them, and he... Holds his hands up because that's a sign for me that he actually feels good about his game right now. So Patrick will go downstairs because just one treble 19 means he will be left on a score. So job done there. Can he get the bonus of another one? 
76. Like I said, he brought everything Mike into that last 112. Dart. The bounce out gives Mike Gillett a little bit of extra time. Means he's going to get two visits to polish off this 112. Should he need them? 92. He just needs to manage that frustration that he's demonstrating. Still a big frame, but if you ask any dart player, you're going to get three darts to win the leg. 59. You Might look hard 20. Off. Now for the execution. Ten. Patu Carl won so far on the doubles for Mike Gillett. He only hit one out of his eight attempts in the opening game. Yet to convert in six attempts in this one. One from 14 for the night. This would hurt. One out of 20. Mike Ricard, 10. Would have held his breath watching the board. He would have been thinking, oh, no. Not again. Would be thinking, oh, no, not again. If he can't convert this double two. Game shot on the second line. Finally, leg. Mike, Mike Gillett gets over the line. The reaction tells the story. I can assure you that's an awful lot of relief as well because I think if so they had gone two first, up game undeservedly, on. but decimated his averages. One from eight on the checkout ratio there for Mike Gillett. That's absolutely ruined his average in this match, but now it's just about the two points. But one out of again, Patrick just quietly but effectively getting on with his job. And we use that term an awful, awful lot in Group A. He's never going to be the headline act. 140. So now turn it to be a bit of a nice game. Mike Gillett is a school teacher by profession. He's got his last day tomorrow. Before they 100. break off for the summer holidays. So, although it's going to be a late night for him and an early morning... It'll be a bit of a party day tomorrow for Mike Gillett before he returns back into action. 55. Sorry, 95. That's what you need to do as well. If you think the referee's called something, don't take the darts out while they're in the board. You can challenge it. Make sure you get the right score. Once they've been removed, you can't say, oh, that was actually a 95. Where's the evidence in? Composure there from Gillett. Should see him go downstairs now, but such a good mark here, bordering on frustration that you don't want to, but that's why you do. 134, part of the car, 170. Two of the best finishes in the game, the big fish and the champagne. Should go downstairs after that first dart. And again, that's awkward as well. 90. Mike Ricard, 132. So because Patrick's on 80, he should be looking at the bullseye first. Doesn't even give himself a chance. All he can do now is lay up. 44. Part of your car, 80. Game shot on the third quality. leg. Patrick Van Den Bougard. Just something special when you get a double like that. It's an 80 finish in two darts. You're just telling your opponent an awful lot as well. Like we say, so much psychology in darts. Both like Mike to throw first. Game on. And you don't require that final dart. It was a, a lovely 14 dart from the Dutchman. He continues to impress. 85. Forty-six. Well, you said earlier, Matt, we've definitely seen the winner now this week. Who will that be? I was dreading you'd say that. 50. I think I'd have to go at this point with the only man who is currently into Saturday night, and that's Big John Henderson. He was really rocking and rolling yesterday and was by far the standout player in terms 100. of the numbers, the stats. But what's most important for me is when he needed the performance the most, that's when we saw the best performances of John Henderson. 100. He's won a week here before. He's won 
probably more titles than a lot of these players put together. Gary Stone 100. was the big rival. And on the evidence of what we've seen so far, he hasn't arrived in that same sort of form. I find it hard to oppose Big John right now. 96. Would you agree with that? Or? Well, I certainly wouldn't disagree in the sense that how would you go against John Ennis? I'm just trying to still look for value for people watching here. and I still don't think we've seen the end of Gary Stone just yet. 59. Mike Ricard, 170. He might be doing an awful lot, and it's a bit of a wake-up call for him, but he has got Mike Gillett next. Again, he'd be expected to win that game. Are you going to get Mike Gillett, who's already on a couple of points? Will it be a bottom of the table clash? 92. Patrick's only thinking 140 minimum here. At 196, you'd only think 180 leaves 16, 140 leaves 56. We're just straight out of touch. 95. Mike Ricard, 78. Give him an outside chance if Mike Gillett messes around with his 78. Game shot on the fourth leg. Mike Much Gillett. better. His doubles have been a bit of a problem tonight, but when he's just got the one dart in hand, he seems really, really confident. 2-2. Two -two. Another very tight if affair. Like Patrick to throw first. I think a lot of that came to the dart that didn't actually go in the double 20 because the way his darts sit in the boards are very flat. So for what Mike Gillett starts, he wants it to be just under the wire and he'll put them just on top. A bit Bill Taylor-esque. So with that dart going so close to tops, I've just been perfect for him just to sit that next one on top. And you know, he's actually hit the barrel very slightly. You could see how it entered the board. 58. Just can't seem to get too far ahead. It was a disappointing star from Patrick. But Mike couldn't capitalise. And you'll see the difference of where the darts go in. Patrick's very quite traditional. But these, you may see something different on the overhead camera. Look at the angle of that. Perfect time. One hundred and eighty. See the perfect max. That would be a dart where Mike Gillett would have been able to use that perfectly, just because of the different angle of entry of the darts. Fifty-eight. Sort of kick to the kick to the right. There's Again. a little kick. You can see the arrow of the flight. 99. A lot of that will come down to the weight of the barrel compared to the skinniness of the flight. Yeah, it is a strange setup. 120. Yeah, Mike Lucar, 164. He's bounce out I've seen that before. Another one of those for the ball. Great setup 132. shot. Well, your opponent back on 219. You don't need to go for the Didn't bullseye. Even consider the bullseye there. Just leave 32. Very sensible player. 134. Mike Ricard, 32. To lead 3 2. There's that internal motivation we've talked about. Just prefer tops. Game shot on the fifth I'm leg. Mike Gillett. As well. He's just beginning to warm to the task is Mike Gillett. It was a bit of a beating early doors by Wesley Plazier. And I did fear that it could be a long night for him, but two points here would set him up for a real Six big game against Gary Stone game next. On. Gary Stone, who walked through the door full 97. of confidence, the big favourite. Has the stuffing been knocked out of him? Or has he now got a point to prove? Big questions coming up in a couple of games' time. Plays here in North up next. 81. Two players who won their opening game, so one of them will not be able to have a 100% record. 123. The perfect dart for Patrick. 
Yes, and that's what he said. 140. He just put an extra 10 mile an hour on that last dart. I've been really impressed here with Mike Gillett, who... 81. We started questioning him because of the amount of missed doubles. And when you're missing doubles, it can affect every part of your game because you just start to lose confidence in the process. Not if you're Mike Gillett. He's got stronger. 96. Mike, someone who couldn't care less if he finishes third place in this group because it's just about getting there Saturday night. That's what happened to him last time. Again, he didn't want to go downstairs when you're on 200 because... Even a straight ton would have left a, a two darter. This is tight. Remember, this would be a break of throw, and Patrick would be thrown in the last leg, so there's real importance on this 120. My car 120. Just assessing the situation, just keeping himself calm. 67. Part of your car, 50. Big moments in this match. It's two darts at tops for 3-3. Three, three. And how many times no on score. Monday did Michael he car, drift down into that double 15 going for the double 10? That's not the first time he's done that. So Mike Gillett is going to get an opportunity for his first two points in this group key campaign. Wowza. That was a long way off. Oh, and he's no busted. Score. They're Part both making 50. a mess. They're both busting. Will he go the same way or will he mix it up? Yeah, dark players are very stubborn, aren't they? Brighton felt confident with him on that double 10. And now he's wishing he went the 18. I don't know about you, but I don't have a lot of confidence here. He's doing everything right. Which usually means one thing. Game shot Smack, on the sixth leg. Bang, Patrick in the middle. Lugard. You can see what he feels about that. That might kill it. That, that smile. He's hurting a little bit there because he should have been off the so stage the now with a 4 2 victory. First. And the fact Game that he on. sees Patrick now many times this week, Patrick has gone 3 3 with his darts. And started beautifully. Can that trend continue? Ninety-six. That's when you rely on the bottle of the players. If you are just joining us after the conclusion of the world match play. 85. Patrick Vanden Bogard started the day four-two success over Gary Stone. Wesley Plazier. 4-1 victory over Mike Gillett. And Richard North, a 4-2 victory over Gary Stone, the man who was favourite to win. He's lost two in 121. two. 121. That is the story so far across the night. But the story in this one is, is Patrick going to make it two from two? And condemn 134. Mike Gillett to two from two on the defeats. Mike Gillett has different options in mind. Yeah, Mike Gillett will feel he should be off this stage now and... He had his opportunities with a 53 finish last time what and it's not I looking see? good all of a sudden because Patrick, his timing in last leg deciders are absolutely fantastic and they've been like 41. that all week. Part of your car, He's got six starts on 104. It's his to lose from here. He's going to get a dart for the match. This time it's the 18's bed. He was smack bang in the middle last time. 72. But he will be back. Time. That's what he's earned himself here. That maximum just gives him the opportunity to revisit the board and get it a long way back on 141. This is for two wins out of two. He never gets the headlines, but he's been terrific this week. Game shot on the Just match. taking Patrick his time. It's a big 4-3 victory for Patrick Vanden Bohada. For Mike Gillis, it's a case of what could have been. He had his chances in that fifth leg, and he'd be disappointed to lose the game 4-3. Nothing really to separate him there in the tail of the tape there. 
Just a big 89.49 for Patrick. What means the most to him there? He's on four points already. And Group B is up and running. He's top of the table. It's a big game coming up next to two guys who have both won their opening games. It's Wesley Plazier against Richard North. Oh, yes, sir. You can bougard in the case of Patrick as he beats Mike Gillett by four legs to three in a decider. It means he is two from two as far as the group is concerned. Right. One of Wesley Prezier and Richard North is going to join him on four points and make the perfect start to Group B. Let's find out in the company of Dancing Duzzo and Magic Matthew. Thank you so much, Henry, as I'm spinning on my back right now. Richard North will take them practice starts. Did you see that 180 straight in there? A little first smile there to the, the referee. First. Joking aside, Game will on. it be double touch at the top? Because Wesley Plazier has the opportunity here to match his compatriot, Patrick Van den Boharder, on four points. How will Richard North 97. do what he said he would do and win this group quite comfortably because he's Richard North? I think he was following the dancing theme there at the start of that one. 97. Do you know what that move's called? Is it the Shabba? <laughs> <laughs> 
16. I don't know. I know it's called something. I was going to say the plie, but that's more like a curtsy, isn't it? And it's called the dozy door. 45. I thought you were being serious. I'm an, I'm an egghead. One out of fourteen. On I've never heard you mention it before. It's a real little and large here. One hundred and seventy-one. We the one eighty in practice, and now the one seven-one when it's game on. But still advantage to the Dutchman, and he's finding that treble twenty bed with real ease right now. Quality start to this first leg. Remember last week, Jonathan Worsley the. Questionable nine dart finish before the, in the practice dance. 134. Where's your celebration? For? Yeah, watch that live as Wesley looks at the 16's bed. He's going to get one dart and a double. And that dart is double 16. 32. And Richard Ocar, 54. Didn't get that. And Richard North, we know what his love of tops. Oh, the job of hitting the big 14. Four tops. Fourteen. Where's your car? Thirty-two. I thought we were definitely on for the music theme of four tops in this match. It's double sixteen for Wesley. Game shot on the first leg. Wesley solid Plazier. opener for Wesley Plazier. Just looks in his real comfort zone right now. He looks like he knows he's the best player in that group. Something like Richie to really first. set Game on. this competition alight. I'm still expecting some real fireworks on Wesley Plazier. Is he, Matt? 96. Saving his very, very best for Saturday night. As long as he gives us enough good stuff before, then oh, he might 100. not be there. There's no guarantee he's going to be there on Saturday night yet. You do feel, though, three from five and with Gillett and Stone yet to register any points. They've got to play each other next. 40. One player will be three games played, zero points. That will make the whole group feel good because you'll be looking at that player and 100. going... 100. I think he's out of it. I think we're going to be three from four now. When you're played in group B, Matt, I mean... 59. Was your minimum win two? Okay. Happy with group winning three. And winning all four is a Brucey bonus. I mean... I'd be 59. lying if I sat here and said I came in with much expectation. You was here that week as well. And I didn't even know if I'd be playing darts for much longer. And yeah. I came into that week and I had no expectation until I played the first match. And I thought, 131. I'm here. That's the point when I went, I can win this group. And only then. But until that point, no, I came in with absolutely... I'd be lying if I said I came in with a plan. 95. Or, originally, I thought, just don't lose all four. It was only, like I say, enjoying that first game. I thought, oh, I can do this. Sixty. Just Where's your car? One hundred and forty-seven. From Richard North. Forty, fifty-nine, one, three, one, and sixty. More consistent dart is coming from Wesley. You want to find a treble lot? Forty-nine. But not that Richard one. Richard Ricard. One hundred and fifteen. Advantage North. Because of his love of tops, he may go start upstairs. Forty-three. Where's your car? Ninety-eight. Never the nicest to finish because you're thinking of double 19 at this point. 78. It does like double double. So it's down to tops for the matter for the leg. 78. I've done that a few times Richard this week. As Wesley. Just like to use and utilize that double 19 bed. I feel for Richard North, this is a must. You might be looking at the bullseye. 15 bullet is 47. Just the Where's one your car? Side 20. of the wire. He just seems to be doing enough right now. It's a good marker. Game shot on the second it's leg. Where's he playing? The big here? man from Holland. As he flexes that shoulder there. Like I said, it's been probably been a bit of a long week. But when you get to that Thursday night, you do start seeing that end of Third the rainbow, Wesley I guess. First. Game on. 100. As he plays, yeah. 
Pete Mike Gillett 4 1 in his opening game. Looking for another sizable win what here. Leg way? difference acts as a bonus point in this group. Very inconsistent. There's North East. 140. He's just looking solid. I think when he wants to put a big score in, he can. That's my feel for him, but I want to see it more. 95. I think that would be one of the most spectacular things I've ever seen if North could get a nine data. It would be something you'd hear about for quite a long amount of time. 43. And again, I'm not really one to speak about that. Been known to be guilty of that factor in the past. Just checking that nobody wanted 170 there. 94, Richard Carr, 167. You can see Richard just looking at the 124 there. Ninety-nine. Where's the car? One hundred and twenty-four. The plaza, yeah. Just one treble. That's going to be treble eighteen for the bull. Ninety-nine. Richard Ducar, sixty-eight. Keep himself in this one and to get the breaker throw back. Sloppy dart. Thirty-five. Where's the car? Twenty-five. A three nil. Game shot on the third leg. Wesley three nil. Or Wesley at this stage you start thinking of legs difference as well. A real big statement to be made by Wesley A. And the Dutch guys will be absolutely delighted the way the night's gone so far. Both like Richard to throw first. Real element Game of frustration here from Richard North because it was a big first win against Gary Stone. Board run maybe a little bit unexpected. Forty three. But it's a tough start to the night for Richard Nor to have Gary Stone first, followed by Wesley. And for Wesley, he has 60. to not fall asleep now. He's got to see that finishing line and really dig deep now because there's been some criticisms this week where he can just go to sleep for a leg or two. And the real outcome here is he can do a real demolition job. 140. Big points. Big legs. Big stuff. And the man Glenn Durant suggested the nickname of Big Stuff for. Even as a purpose built walk on tune. The old days at 97. Soccer AM on the catwalk. Ninety-one. This is good. One hundred and thirty-five. Richard Ocar, one hundred and thirty-five. Needs to finish this. One three three is a toughie because you've got to go from treble twenty down to treble nineteen, but it's all irrelevant. Ninety-three. Lots of pressure on the sixty-nine. But this. It's for a real big statement. The tops. It's 4-0 to the Wesley, Wesley Plazier. Plazier. That's a big, big win over Richard North. He joins his good friend at the top on four points. That's the tail of the tape there. Not an awful lot to choose between the averages there. But when he got down to a double, Wesley Plazier smashed each one of them in. It's a big 4-0 demolition job for Wesley Plazier. He'd be delighted with that. And it's time for some momentum for one of the next two players. It's going to be either Gary Stone or Mike Gillett. They're up next.
Every Saturday, we open our doors for our weekly finals night. For a unique and intimate dance experience. Meet the dance stars and even the team of the telly. Here at our purpose-built venue in Portsmouth. Every single Saturday evening. Tickets can be booked via this QR code or at www.dartshop.tv for a very small booking fee. Follow us at MSS Darts on Twitter, Facebook, Instagram and TikTok for all the latest ticketing news. All you need to do, log on, book, turn up and the action gets underway from 7.30pm. So what are you waiting for? Get your tickets to the darts. We look forward to welcoming you to the Moda Super Series very soon. Very well, welcome back to the Moda Super Series where it's time to get the half-time oranges out and get the assessment of Glenn Durant, the three-time Lakeside champion, up here on the balcony. It's been an interesting night so far. This is exactly what happened if you're joining us late into the coverage this evening from the Live Lounge in Portsmouth. Well, the big news so far this evening is the man who was favoured to go and win the group, Gary Stone. Well, he's got an uphill battle now to qualify because he has lost each of his opening two matches by four legs to two to Patrick van den Boharder and Richard North. As far as the Dutchmen are concerned, well, you can't get past the Dutchies as far as tonight is concerned at the Super Series because they've both won their opening two fixtures. It is they that occupy the top of the table. As I say, Glenn Dunn is alongside me up here on the balcony to analyse and assess what we've seen so far. Let's begin with Patrick van den Boharder because he was a nine to one outsider going into tonight's session to go on and win the group. And he's put in two real solid performances performances hasn't he yeah I think solids maybe understating it slightly because that game over Gary Stone he was not expected at all to win that game and just crucial finishes under pressure two darters 90 finish and you can see the disappointment there from Gary Stone but I've really enjoyed it like I said technically sound doesn't give an awful lot away and like you said he has this last dart with a double A tee, but he just resets himself here, and that's what I really like. That's what he's learning. I think he's playing himself into a little bit of form, and that was really elegant, really smart, and he's, he's, he's playing very nicely and deservedly. He's sat at the top. Well, we pinpointed Patrick yesterday, didn't we, at the end of the show. The fact that his wins came across a consistent time frame, this is set out for the way Group B works because you can lose as many as you can win and go through. Yeah, my mind keeps going back to Robbie because, uh, you know, he really should have been in Group B and obviously he had that injury and Patrick was all over it because Patrick, as far as he was concerned, was going to be in Group C. He was going to be planning his attack on there. But Robbie King, the Australian, just had a real nightmare uh, and we've seen Patrick into Group B and fear a funny old thing. And now all of a sudden he's flying high, but the job's only half done. And he's got a couple of big games to come because expectation kicks in now, Henry. All of a sudden, he's not that underdog, that nine to one that no one thinks he's going to have a win. He's top of the table. And what comes there is responsibility to himself. You've been in that position. How does the psychology change? Psychology is absolutely... Uh, I would even say it's as much as 20% of the game. It's, it's so much... He'll be buzzing with confidence right now. That's a real big thing for him. When you're two out of two, part of your brain's telling you, well, I'm going to give myself... If I can win another one out of my two next, next games, if I can go away with three wins out of four, I'll take that. And like I said, you're fighting with yourself, that little devil on your shoulder for Gary Stone, whereas Patrick Brandenbo had everything, is rosy in the garden at home. Well, as for Wesley Plazier, the other Dutchman involved in the group, he has also won both of his matches, and it looks as if he's really set to make a bit of a statement now. We keep saying he's making a step. He's just beating people at the moment. Like I said, this guy is a 100-plus average man. we yet to see them staggeringly good averages. Is he just saving his best till Saturday night? He's just beating people because he's a very, very talented player. I still think there's something major to come from Wesley Plazier. And we saw it at the World Masters, didn't we? Where it's one of the, it's a similar, I suppose, format in the fact that you've got to play a lot of rounds yeah. to get to those final stages. This is quite similar in terms of the intricacies of it. So winning something like that, does it give him a lot of experience to hear on debut? It should do. I was a little bit disappointed his demeanour in, in Group A. I remember in one game he yawned and I was like, this is a massive opportunity, a big prize this week. 
and then champions with 20 grand. This is the biggest prize in amateur darts right now. And when he's, you know, when he was yawning, yes, it's been a long day. I feel like shaking him, saying, "Come on, Wesley, you are the star attraction. You're alongside people like John Henderson and Gary Stone, but you are the star attraction." Now demonstrate that. So that's Wesley Plazier's night so far. Well, Gary Stone has been the biggest story, but perhaps, well, it's not for the right reasons as far as he's concerned. Big expectations on his shoulders mm -hmm. coming into this. He was someone that we were labelling right at the very start of the week to maybe go on and win the whole competition. Two defeats so far, and he's in must-win territory now. He's absolutely in must-win territory, but that could be a good thing. We watched him in practice. He just couldn't miss. He was just throwing them off the lampshades and just like that 136 for a 12 darter there, but it was few and far between. He's his biggest critic himself, so he'll know, he'll be disappointed. But part of me is quite glad in a sense. Maybe we see a different side of Gary Stone now. He's up against it, and maybe we'll see his A game where, let's be honest with you, I thought I was going to be standing here now saying Gary Stone's played 2-1-2. Two, two. If he's going to get through in Group B, he's going to do, have to do it the hard way. Remember, coming third is just as good as coming first, and that's the mentality he should have, really. So this is how it correlates in terms of the league table then. Wesley Plazier, Patrick Van Buharda, both on four points, both victors in their two matches. Richard North sat in a sandwich with Mike Gillett and Gary Stone at the bottom, both yet to get off the mark. But that isn't going to last much longer because the pair go toe-to-toe -to -toe in our next match here at the Super Series. And quite simply put, we're heading towards must-win territory. Absolutely, I must win. And that's the way they should treat this game because it's going to be very hard to come back for the guy that loses this game. It still can be done. We've seen it before. But absolutely, it's a must-win. But from them, they, sh they should be motivated themselves to say, I ain't losing this game and I'm winning my next game. That's the way they should be treating it. They should be focused. This is a big, big game for both players. So let's get into it. It's the second half of our action here in Group B at the Moda Super Seas. Glenn Dunn is going to make his way into the commentary box to describe all of the action for the rest of the evening in the company of primetime Matthew Edgar. Thank you, Henry. All set up there on the balcony between Henry and Glenn Duran, and I can only echo those statements. This is a big game of darts for both players in terms of their hopes. We have seen people lose all four before and come through, but them situations are extremely Looks like rare. Looks through first. Game on. You feel whoever loses this is on a massive uphill climb where they're probably going to have to go win four or five matches in a row. 58. You know, they're capable. Mike Gillett has won a week before. He played in Champions Week in the last series. Gary Stone has come so close so many times, but has navigated his way Forty. through to finals night on many occasions. He was favourite, not just to navigate his way through this. 100. To actually top the group. And I think the concerning thing here for Gary Stone is he's not just been getting beaten... He's been getting beaten with subpar performances. Yeah, maybe this is the right game for the pair of them. Like I said, Wesley Plazier comes next for Gary Stone as well, but I don't think he'll want to go into that game on zero points. I really feel it's a must win for both players. It can be done. It has been done. But just for the you know the motivation of that person themselves. Forty five. He was just dipping under the treble 20 bed in previous games. 140. A marked improvement already. And like I said, he might just come as a better player. Even if he just to say scrapes through the group. Because he's sometimes you just feel with Gary Stone. He's either going to Gary smash Carl, it. 103. Or he's going to lose a really tight game. Tops for a great start. 83. Well, this leg is not just smashing, he's came in like a wrecking ball. 40. Gary O'Connor, 20. Just hasn't started this leg at all. And maybe Game that's exactly what Gary, Gary Stone, Stone needs. It's a really solid 16. That hold off throw, and for Mike Gillity, has to be up and running right now. Second leg, Mike, to throw first. Game on.
89. Ninety one, just being through the players' area there, only one voice. Thirty eight, and I'm Richard North. Just the way the darts are sitting, what have we got it? That tells me an awful Eight. lot for Gary Stone. And we're just sitting just slightly under. Incredibly, exactly the same place each time. And you get 85. the feel with Gary Stone as well. He likes to be in the lead. He likes to beat people up. He's just beginning to find it now, isn't he? It's not over just yet for him. 125. And he's just getting that fluid movement where it just looks and comes through nice and easy. 100. Gary O'Carr, 105. I suppose... When you've already lost the first few games, that stress of it has gone out the situation. 85. For a 12 darter there for Gary Stone and the breaker throw. He will be back. Gillett can't take out 189. And if we're being hypercritical, all Gary's saying is, why do I keep going under on that double top? Because that's his go-to double. He's got another three darts. And that's what he's 40. got to remind Gary himself. 20. He hit this first time last time. And when good things happen, you just try to replicate that. Being shot on the second leg. just Gary creeps Stone. into the double. So you start saying to yourself, maybe, maybe just a little bit of luck's coming on my side because when things are going against you, that could have easily trickled into double 15. So they got it exactly first. Game what one. he needed. And if he can get his darts, win his darts here. He still might have a big part to play in this week 11 here. 125. The Super Seas at the fantastic live lounge here in Portsmouth. And with a crowd here on Saturday, John Henderson in the building. Just beginning 54. to warm up very, very nicely. The two Dutch lads are, are looking really good tonight. Fascinating group. See, we have tomorrow afternoon. It's just beginning to warm up nicely. 140. This is the Gary Stone that we've been seeing on those. ADC nice events and those vault events back up in Scotland where he's been beating people up with these big ton plus averages. 100. This is why Gary Stone opened the night as the favourite, the quite strong favourite. Came in at 11 to 8. It makes the final game of the night very interesting, Matt. He's going to have to sit there for another hour and watch. 64. Gary O'Carr, 136. 96. Nice to watch after 12 darts leaving tops. You'd be thinking, why couldn't he have done this in the first game? Well, you didn't, Gary. 137. Just Gary O'Carroll, 40. Never look in your windows backwards. Always look forwards. 35. Mike O'Carroll, 150. That's what the turning point in his first match was, that missing tops, tens and fives. Is he going to be punished in this one? Because it's a good start. It's a good effort. It's just the width of a wire. That's the small margins in which this game is judged. 66. Gary O'Carr, 5. Get back on track very quickly here. Gary Stone for a 3 0 lead. Game shot on the third leg. Gary Stone. Clinical. And. Very, very clear of Mike Gillett here, who's not able to even land a glove Both on like Gary Mike Stone at the first. moment. Game Game to have a dart at a double in this match. He's in big, big trouble. He's a long way off the pace that Gary Stone is setting. Foxy. Yeah, we had a lovely chat with Mike Gillett before, and you just when he left, I just thought I hope he does really, really well tonight. One out of them, Foxy. Clearly, see, he's a great guy, good guy, and but this is dart. It can be ruthless up there. You're talking to someone who went 18 months of getting bashed up all the time. So one single night's not going to be the end of the world, but it's never nice to see someone. As Gary Stone just looks like a totally different player. Now. I know his best mate, Alan Kerr, will be watching. So if you're watching, Alan, 
Still one of my favourite exhibitions in the Crown Inn. 59. But still the worst hotel I was ever put in, by the way. I'll never forgive you for that. One hundred. Very nice from Gary Stone. Just what he needed this mat, isn't it? It's a momentum turner, isn't it? It's validating that feeling 81. that he came in Gary here Carl, with. He came in with the shoulders back, full of confidence. He came in knowing he was the favourite and looking to enforce that situation. We may see Mike Gillett get his first attempt at a double here. 63. Mike Lucar, 87. Missed the board. 18 shot on the fourth leg. What you do when you miss a board. You just get the feeling of Mike Gillett and just needed a something there. There's that wry smile there from Gary Stone, but he has the dart. Even if it goes the distance, he's going to have the dart a couple of times. He's still a heavy, heavy favourite. Maybe the priority, maybe the objective was to get up there and win this match 4-0. The kind 51. of standards he sets himself, and that's not a great start. And from absolute nowhere, can Mike Gillard play himself into this match? And that's the fine start he needed. You say that's the highest standards he sets himself. But there is that question, isn't there? There's a fine line between high standards and unrealistic expectation. And... We do see with a lot of players that they expect to win every leg, every moment. You don't have to win every moment. 100. You just have to win the most amount of moments. And not every moment, certainly at the opening parts of legs. 96. You don't need to win every exchange, every three darts. He knows he's got that weapon in his armory as well where he can just pull out a 12 dart at any time. Go downstairs in the 19s because there's a single 19 here. He'll go for the bullseye. Well, he did 95. right there, but the 25 would have left the 170. And he Game likes that double 18, leg. doesn't Might he? From absolutely nowhere. My notes are written for a big 4 0 victory there for Gary Stone, and Mike Gillett has turned this around in spectacular style. And double 18 Six has been Mike a big favourite Game for on. him. And he's right back in this one. And that right, right smile once again is telling you he's, he's now feeling it because he's seen his opponent them from all over the place now. In a matter of minutes, Mike Gillett's put about 20 points on his average. An 11 dart to that 58. last one. And it was a breaker throw. And this is what I mean, that is Gary Stone one of those players that feel they have to win every moment? Because the more of these moments that Mike Gillett is winning... 35 the more we're seeing Gary Stone drop. And this is where your devil jumps on your shoulder, where you're thinking, you're throwing it all away. One the but that's the different eight. Gary Stone I'm seeing, a more mature Gary. And I really like that return, but here comes Gillett. This game is warming up very nicely. One hundred and eighty. Say cheese, Paul. Is it me or is Mike Gillett throwing so much quicker all of a sudden? Mike Lucar, 97. Just finding that rhythm and I think that breeds confidence as well. You've seen my throw when, when I'm taking forever. When I'm playing decent, there's a rhythm there. And that's what I'm seeing with Mike Gillett right 37. now. 37. Oh, you took Gary forever, Carl, yeah, 164. Sure. I want to beat you 6-0, but... Should look at Bolt. 89. Mike Ricard, 60. He's played an absolute blinder here. He's going to get two darts at tops for 3-3. Three, three. Game shot on what the sixth leg. What a turnaround. The checkout ratio for Mike Gillies had three darts at a double. And fair play to him because he was dead and buried. He was out for the count. And Gary so Stone, the final leg, no Gary matter what, the what he Game tells on. you afterwards, he is feeling it right. He is desperate for a ton 40 start. Beautiful start, Gary Stone. 137. Takes a real champion to do that when your opponent is absolutely flying. But here comes Gillis. What a match. 140. It almost feels harsh to say that in a couple of throws time, one of these players is going to be bottom of the table. Three games played on zero points. 
100. A really strange game, but please give credit to Mike Gillett, this man in your picture. He was averaging in the 70s. Gary was looking at a 4 0 victory, and luckily, he can't miss. 100 on 80. I think Gary Stone, in a, a secret sort of twisted way, is not enjoying this. No, he's it's not. He's, just... he's not enjoying it because he's not thinking correctly. This is a performance of Mike Gillett. Mike just start his campaign in so many ways. So impressive. 99. Absolute Michael respect to them both. Who is the best finisher under these circumstances? First of all, it's Mike Gillett. Is it the bull or is it treble? It's the bullseye. 56. Oh. Gary Ocar, 74. To conclude the job, to resist the challenge. 54. Mike oh. Ocar, 25. He's had an opportunity, but it was just a dart. This has been the comeback of all comebacks. He's going to get two darts at double A. Being what a match. staggering performance of Mike Gillett. He was out for the count. He was looking for the early bat. He was 3-0 down. His opponent was flying. But Mike Gillett was absolutely superb in that last four legs. And look at the tail of the tape. What an outstanding match. But the one that smacks right to me is four from five in the checkout. Under extreme circumstances, Mike Gillett is up and running. It's a top of the table Dutch clash next. It's Patrick van den Bohada against Wesley Plazier. Follow that, guys.
Welcome back to the Motor Super Series where Mike Gillett may have just put in one of the most inspired comebacks we've ever seen here at the Live Lounge in Portsmouth. 113 average in four legs to get the better of Gary Stone 4 free from 3 0 down. And have a listen to these legs that he won the match in 14 11, 14 14. That was a purple patch and a half from Mike Gillett. Well, next up, it's two friends going toe to toe Patrick Van der and Wesley Plazier, both winning both their matches so far. But friendships will go to one side. We've got two friends in the commentary box in Matthew Edgar and Glenn Dunn. Whilst I'm stuck up here all on my own. Oh, poor Henry. Should you through first? I'll swap with you when you said two friends in here. Game on. Refereed by our Paul Hinks. Two good friends playing for the fourth time this week. And it's the guy that's walking to the hockey. So that's the better of it. He's won two of the three games so far. Once again, he is straight back in. He looks absolutely fit as what a flea right way? now. He looks like he's just arrived. Whereas Wesley's just beginning to show signs. It's really warm in there tonight. 91. And this has all the ingredients for a great game because that even goes as far as saying the winner of this one will have one foot into Saturday night. They can really enjoy their final game of the night. 44. So an awful lot riding on this. I think that was one of the key characteristics I remember from Patrick's Group A campaign. An awful lot of matches raid open with a max. He's just progressing nicely. Just, and that belief is beginning to come. Them issues that he had with the doubles early doors. Nice he's got a pedigree. I mean, he's a he's a good player. He's just, like I said, he's playing himself into form. And not once did I think he'd be picking the trophy on Saturday night. But 81. The Motor Super Series is all about creating opportunities for people. And creating stories from the Adam Warners to the Luke Littlers. I mean... All stories are being created Nineteen. by the Motor Super Series, and why can't Patrick get into that bracket as well? We was both here the week. Adam Warner won it just before Christmas. He was a fifty to one outsider that week. Patrick Car ninety four. Still the best crowd, and I think there's only six or eight of them. They were absolute crazy. So a big sixteen. Fifty four. Yeah, I just thought Wesley looked really tired as he approached the stage there. 95. Like I said, it's Part of your after midnight 40. here now. That's whether or not you've planned your day perfectly well, whereas this guy looks bright-eyed and bushy-tailed. And there's that little reset. It's been successful for him before. Game shot on the first leg. Once again, it is. Out. He does have these trends. You'll see him go over. He'll put his darts down. Put his hands on the towel. He'll take a sip with his non-throwing hand. One so like Wesley time. Throw first. Game on. He'll then walk behind Wesley, look down without seeing the darts. And start the process of throwing his dart. It's as if you've seen that all before. But all that processing time, all that thinking time is taken up 58. by activity. And the worst thing to do is have time which isn't filled with activity because then the brain will start 99. to fill that time with activity. And you go down some serious rabbit holes when you stood behind a player at the back of the stage. 60. Should look at the 18s now. 58. There's a real close up of his throat. I felt like he needed a max to get back in this leg, and that's exactly what he's given us. 180. He wants the double check. Twenty-five. Still the best referee in the game. I've read that a couple of times this week. Fifty. Very iconic call, isn't it? That one eighty yeah, of the great man. 
porridge for breakfast, pot noodle for tea, then call out 25 59. games. Patrick R. Warren, the life, 45. Mr. Paul Hinks. In the life of Patrick Van den Bohard, he has an opportunity here of leading 2 0 against his compatriot. Now it's about setting up. He wants a treble. 57. Doesn't get it. Wesley O'Carr, 120. Said, Wesley's average is very substandard. I just felt there was something as he walked on the hockey. It didn't look right. He can put it right now. It's tops. Getting shot on the Watch second leg. Where's the buzz here? Does mean something to him. You can see that reaction there. Patrick has got the better of him this week. Third leg, Patrick, you throw the first. We're crushing the stamina of Wesley, haven't we, at times? Definitely. And I, I'm feeling it again here, you know. Like he, he's just sort of almost slouching around the stage a little bit. Like, there's not any spring. The, the shoulders are a bit droopy. I mean, it is now quarter past midnight here in the UK. He would have been getting used to getting up early in the mornings and... I often call this little period of time dart lag. Remember the old jet lag example where sort of the body clock is used to an early morning. And we was discussing off air what time did we wake up this morning. I said it was about seven because that's the time I've been waking up the last couple of days. And I wonder if it were the same. Maybe he got up around the same sort of 140. time as the morning sessions and he's had to sit around all day. And now he's just, his day's longer than it normally would be. But He's digging deep. 125. This is where the real experienced players that maybe take like an energy bar in One the of or an energy drink just to compliment the long night, the long day. Like I said, it's whatever you've said there about Wesley, it's the polar opposite for Patrick, who looks fresh as a daisy, really focused. 60. And going through that same process every single time. Big 15, just double check. 135. 60. Part of your car, 40. The 2-1. If I had a criticism... Seeing out games. Where he's got better is what he's doing now. Just maybe just giving himself a moment. So as good as he's been, your car? 120. areas of improvement. And Wesley's that type of inspirational player who just shows absolute fra uh, flashes of brilliance. He needs one right now. He's just done this. 80. Part of your car, 10. Hold his throw. 50. Get the feeling that's the old one at one in approach that you'd normally do on double one, but a very Six. low dart. Where's your car? 40. You don't feel like Blazy is going to let him off again. Yes, I could write this school report of Moda Super Series right now, and yeah, the lowest mark is seeing out legs. 50. Nothing at all spectacular. There's that routine he does, but this time we've been bordering on a little bit of frustration. Four flag Wesley to throw first. Game on. He should be leading 2 1, but he's not. Doesn't look for a spring in the step of Wesley Plazier again. Trebleless visit. One hundred and eighty. How many times, Matt? How many times has he started legs one eighty? So tightly packed together, they would have fit inside a very famous one hundred. Eighty. 
AG1. Just go through that phase in this match now where if Wesley could put a real spurt on, he could take 46. control of this match and the group. Well, Patrick's just showing that little bit of tenacity, that little bit of fight. He really should be 2 1 up. 55. We've had some good battles this week. I mean, opening game of the week, Wesley absolutely trounced Patrick. And I figured at that no, point for Patrick. Not. Nine o'clock on half past nine on Monday morning. I really figured for the guy because it was a real pace thing. But boy, has he improved. 58. 85. It wouldn't have been an evening at the darts if we weren't discussing Paul Hinks and 127 and game. One of the most famous moments Paul Hinks been involved in at the World Match Play. He's not going to get the opportunity to call it on this occasion. But Wesley is going to get the opportunity to put himself one leg away from the match. A match that would see him clear at the top of the table on six points. Playing three and winning three. 95. Partizukar, 40. Yeah, he's had a check out of 120, Wesley. He's missed the 120. And now he's missed the Nelson. Game shot on the fourth leg. Patrick van den Boga. Patrick van den Boga. Nothing to separate them right now. And that was for a break of throw. Just feel Wesley just flat to Patrick deceive at times. Players. Game on. I think what I would say to any of the players, don't catch him early doors. It's Gary Stone who plays him in the last game, the penultimate game of the night. That is a massive game for Gary Stone. Now, I'm not really sure how he'll be feeling in that back room. It's been an 96. absolute disaster of a night. Ninety-one. I think the disappointment for Gary Stone, he was was not able to convert that three-nil lead in the last one. I mean, Mike Gillett, fantastic from three-nil down. He averaged one hundred and thirteen point four three at the point of being three-nil down. So Gary one Stone can't 40. be too hard on himself. But after you've lost two games already at that point, that's where you start to lag. One hundred and forty. Great response. Patrick really should start downstairs. He's very clever with his board management, so I have no doubt that he will. He has. He could go back upstairs now because he's covered the treble 19 58. bed. That just gives a little opening now for Big Wes. Here's some unit, isn't he? One hundred. I'm saying nothing. Might end up upsetting him. 100. What did I say? I can't remember. I will apologise if I said something. 57. What's your car? 170. Forty-five. That was a big Patrick chance of Plazier there. Like I said, he just looks so lethargic. I'm getting the feeling he's going to like a crowd. Yeah, I agree. One hundred and eighteen. Most people this week actually would enjoy to have a crowd in here on Saturday night. Really feed off it and that instant feedback and emotion. 60. Patrick Ocar, 32. 2 more darts and he won't be rushed. He'll do this in his own time. Six. 
16. What's the car? 65. To break the throw. Twenty-five. Part of your car, sixteen. The pace is just really, really slow, and I don't think it's suiting either player. Game shot on the fifth leg. Patrick van den Boogaard. Let's Patrick just do what he needs to do. Six leg Wesley to throw first. Game on. This is the way I've been really disappointed with Wesley. This is a game he should 54. have. 54. With his reputation, with his titles. Whether it's the fact he's playing Patrick, whether it's the pace he doesn't like. Just doesn't feel a very nice game for him, and Patrick has to jump all over this. 97. Fifty-four. One hundred. Forty-five. Big chance of Patrick Van den Boerharder now. More to your head with the darts. And if you're just looking at your opponent there, that's got to give you some motivation. Because it's exactly what he does. This is exactly reminiscent of the games they've played against each other this week. Wesley has not enjoyed playing his 44. good friend. Part of your car, 164. Which is in the 70s. It's just not what we expect. And for Patrick, it's all over this. Doesn't need to go for treble 18. Do you get the feeling that when Wesley's playing 100. Patrick, he just loses the intensity? He just looks... He looks tired. He simply just looks tired. I don't think I can add much more to that. Or 98. If you don't have your own motivation there, he gives himself a thumbs up there. But it's the 16's bed for the match. It's two darts, a double eight. And it's Game Patrick Van den Bohardy, he's the guy who was the big outsider in Group B. He's never going to be the headline act, but he's played 3-1-3. Three, three. He continues to impress. Wesley Plazier just continues to flatter to deceive. And Patrick Van den Bohardy will be absolutely delighted with that win over his good friend and moves on to six points, the first player. And next up, it's Mike Gillett after that sensational comeback against Richard North. Back after this short break.
Welcome back to the Motors Super Series where Patrick's perfect purple, purple patch continues as he gets the better of Wesley Plazier by four legs to two. This is what we've seen then so far this evening. Van der Bahada making it three wins from his three games. He could complete the car with victory over Richard North in our final game of the evening session. As a Plazier still in a healthy enough position. Right, next up for us, it is a last game of the evening for Mike Gillett. He takes on Richard North. Watching this one is Glenn Amat. Thank you so much, Henry. First leg, yeah, Mike, to throw first. In that previous game, it's two good friends playing game against on. each other. Well, it's two travelling partners here. They both travel together. And which Mike Gillett are we going to get? The guy who went 3 0 down in rapid time to Gary Stone. Or the guy who hit 113 average with a sensational 81. comeback. He must now be full of confidence going into this game. Game where no doubt they've played each other many, many times. But you feel the importance is really... 105. On right yeah, two did travel down together today. Mike Gillett playing his last game of the evening. But 60. he won't be able to go home because he'll have to wait around for his lift with Richard North. Richard North will be coming up in our final game of the evening, taking on Patrick van den Boharder, who three from three. 100. And he's in a very strong position to book himself into Saturday night. When this week started, he was the biggest outsider of them all. He could be in the final six. 140. Fifty-nine. It was a staggering turnaround, wasn't it, from Mike Gillett? He was going home with no points. He was. He looked dejected. Forty-one and from somewhere. He checked out on that eighty-seven finish, and then it just started a barrage of incredible darts. One hundred and twenty. This feels like he's slowed the pace back 59. down again a little bit. When he was in that Richard run of 113 average against Gary Stone, 14, 11, 14, 14. Seemed to be throwing a little bit quicker. 77. Mike Lucar, 120. It's probably something he doesn't realise and just something we can analyse as we see the throw. You want to try and eliminate as much thinking process. He's not going to get a dart at a double. 41. Richard Rukar, 40. Richard North can put himself in a healthy position in this match and also in the league table as well. One final game against top of the table. Game shot on the first leg. Richard North. Had a, and just over. Just telling you exactly what happened there. Two very high ones. And executed. Mighty fine. Second leg, Richard to throw first. Game on. Maybe Mike Gillett is just waiting to go 3 0 down again before he starts playing. 62. I know Gary Stone will be watching now, thinking, he didn't play like that against me. 95. 100. One hundred. Just beginning to find that treble twenty bed again. Just seems to be a very slow starter tonight, doesn't he? Well, you say Gary Stone won't be saying he didn't play that against me. However, one hundred and thirty-three until the point he was three 0 down. Then he started to play like Mike Van Gillett. Fifty-eight. <laughs> Took me a while to work that out there. 96. Oh, 43. Richard Ducar, 110. Well, we're coming to the final games now. Matching North will have another game after this. Tops for 2 0. 90. So many players are dropping deep, aren't they, with that first dart? 
95, Richard Ducar, 20. Getting shot on the second leg, Richard North. Very solid from Northy. Just keeping his emotions in check. He's a real bouncy character, very Nathan Aspinall esque. We'll go through like the semi finals of the match Game play on. tonight. A real character, believes in all his ability. And Mike Gillard has to start. 100. Now we has to can't keep giving leads a 3 0 away and expect to throw 113 average in. And Northy just seems to be warming up very nicely. 93. Never been a fan of that. No, I don't get it. I, I think it burns a dart. But I think comfortable would be the word at the moment to describe this performance from Richard North. It just seems very at ease and at a pace and a standard you feel he could just produce all day. 58. Yeah, I've been disappointed with the standard tonight. I mean, there was that incredible run from Gillett. But I think overall, and it hasn't been an outstanding 66. night. And the person who's mopped up is Patrick van der harder than nine to one outside with the group going into this to begin of the night. I think I was expecting 24. fireworks when I seen these fire play five players. Eighty one. Fancied a bit of fireworks and you're feeling like you're getting sparklers. One hundred and forty. Mike the car one hundred and seventeen. Thirty-nine. And that's just opened this leg back up here for Richard North. Because unless Mike Gillett can find a treble with the opening dart, it's only gonna be the one dart 16. of the double. Mike Ricard, 78. Start on the 18's bed. Two darts, a double 12. Game shot on the third leg. Mike Gillett. And has he flicked that switch again? Fourth leg reaches to throw first. Game on. Just feels a real different pace this time where Gary Stone was sort of handing it on a plane to Mike Gillett. 95. He's such a quick player himself. But it's definitely if Mike's watching these games back when he has adds real pace to that throw and the real rhythm. 50. That's when he really did get those sensational results. 180. Just doing enough right now, isn't he? Yeah, that's his second 180 of the night. 140. Oh, I get it. The biggest 180 hitter of them all at the moment. He's at six. But this is his fourth fixture. He's the first player to reach four. 137. So doing enough. I go back to that word I used in the last leg. Comfortable. Comfortable performance so far from Richard. 97. North. Richard Ricard, 89. He hasn't to do anything real spectacular, but this would be for an 11 data. Travel 19. We well, got there Game in the end. on the fourth leg, Richard North. What a beautiful 12 data. Just reminding not only Mike Gillard, but the rest of the players just to say the game's feeling good. I'm not having to be at my best. Fifth leg, Mike to third first. Game on. Does Mike Gillard wake up when he sees his opponent 100. on three legs again? The match has been dominated by Northy. A very solid 92 average at the moment. Just looking really, really good. 140. Is it time to put the afterburners on? 140. 140. Early indications are that he's... 96. Fancying the task again. Sixty, distinctly average is my assessment of this group. Anything to add to that? Flashes, haven't we? We've had really good patches. No more than that. Mike Gillick comeback. That was exceptional. Eighty-nine. 
Down with that room's quiet next door without Northy in there, isn't it? All you've heard is deep travelling vocals coming through the wall all night. 41. The players in there as well. They're probably glad to get the break as well. I think the one I remember was Aaron Monk. This is good from Northy. 85. Michael Carr, 160. We talked about flashes of brilliance. It's needed more than ever right now. Game Go shot on the fifth leg. Mike that. Gillett. What a sensational finish on Mike Gillett. He just has these moments. From absolute nowhere again, he pings out a 160. Six leg reaches to throw first. Game on. Funny old game. Some people aren't comfortable front running. Some people play better though. from behind. Maybe Mike Gillett is one of those. Because he was 3-0 down. He produced his best. He was 3-1 down here. He's starting again to produce one the best. Of them, and again, it's got to be said, that pace. Once again, he's quickening up. And when he gets quicker, he tends to get better. 139. Fair play to Northy. An excellent response. This time, Gillis 41 cannot repeat the heroics. It's advantage Northy. You might see the 18s come into a consideration here. 42. Again, yeah, that would have left the big fish some argue where just keep it basic, stay on the 20s bed. But he's got 100 ahead here. One out of them, 40. And remember, this is on Northeast throw, meaning if Mike Gillett can sneak this leg, he would become favourite for the match 100. by having the throw in the last. But that once again, gives Northey the advantage. And what Mike Gillett would give for a 140 right now. 60. Richie Ducar, 120. For the match. Trevor will give him a dart of tops. Won't find it. 60. So Gillett, who Michael took out Carl, a 160 in the last leg. Slightly easier task. Needs to end on the tops. But he only needs the one treble this time. Can't find it. So Richard 100. North should Richard be getting 60. two darts for the match. It would be two wins out of three. And a very acceptable start to his Group B campaign. He's got a dart, a double ten. He Game didn't need to move the across Richard the hockey. That is a big, big dart, a big, big win. 4-2 to Richard North against his good friend, Mike Gillett. It shows you exactly how he feels. Once again, he'd be left disappointed because of that confidence burst he had and that big win over Gary Stonebridge. Richard North, very professional job. Just shy of a 92 average. Four from nine on the outer ring. 89 being his best finish. The 160 finish from Gillett once again. Flashes of brilliance. It's the penultimate game of the night. It's Wesley Plazier against Gary Stone. Off after this short break.
every Saturday we open our doors for our weekly finals night. For a unique and intimate dance experience. Meet the dance stars and even the team off the telly. Here at our purpose-built venue in Portsmouth. Every single Saturday evening. Tickets can be booked via this QR code. Or at www.dartshop.tv for a very small booking fee. Follow us at MSS Darts on Twitter, Facebook, Instagram and TikTok for all the latest ticketing news. All you need to do, log on, book, turn up and the action gets underway from 7.30pm. So what are you waiting for? Get your tickets to the darts. We look forward to welcoming you to the Moda Super Series very soon. Welcome back to the Motor Super Series. Uh, before the break, Richard North got the better of Mike Gillett by four legs to two. That rounds off Mike's night. Well, it's a result that he would like to forget, but when you consider he's, well, going to be sharing a car home with Richard North, I don't think he's going to be allowed to forget it, that is for sure. Well, the 160 was a highlight for Gillett nonetheless. Well, we're going to our final couple of rounds of matches. There's Plazier against Stone with Matt and Glenn. First leg, Wesley to throw first. Game on. Thank you so much, Henry. I was expecting this game as billed as two unbeaten players going for the player that's going to be top of the group. But how wrong I would have been in relation to Gary Stone, that's for sure. Simply has to win this game. And Wesley plays here. If he was watching the last game, Gary, I think he'd have been looking at a very lethargic 100. performance against Patrick Van den Boerhaarder. Probably felt he'll stamp all over it, but also the little devil will jump on his shoulder and say, no doubt, 93. this is where Wesley produces his best game of the week. That's the kind of thoughts that'll be in Gary's mind right now. He just has to focus on the job. 100. Just give himself some platform for tomorrow, Matt. Yeah, I did go to get a glass of water. 140. On my way back through, I saw Gary Stone shaking his 134. head. 134. Smiling and shaking his head. Just almost as if to say, what do I need to do? 41. Gary of Car 167. Everything I do, someone finds something more. Yeah, that's that little devil on your shoulder saying that. That's what he's got to wipe away. 131. Where's your car? 132. People have come back. 13. 65. Got your car? 36. For a break of throw. Once again, it's 28. It started off in Where's leg one of the night when Gary Stone at tops, tens, and fives. And it went downhill after that. It's bullseye for Plazzi. And if this goes to Gary Stone's mind, 29. Gary in eight. the bull. Gary's got to eradicate them thoughts. Focus on double four. Getting shot on the first leg. Gary Just Stone. Move on from there. Just put it down to a bad night. Just give yourself, because Gary Stone can easily go through the card tomorrow. He's that good. He wasn't the tournament favourite. Second like Gary for no reason. First. Game on. Hasn't gone to plan. Well, then you look at plan B, you look at plan C, and you come back tomorrow refreshed with a couple of points. 43. Under the belt. He only needs to make the top three. He doesn't need to win the group. If he wants to be here on Saturday night, three players will qualify from your group of five here. One hundred. Question the stamina and the staying power. That dark of the seventeen felt a little bit idle. Ninety-seven. That was the dart that ultimately meant they had the dart at the ball, rather than having a dart to take the leg off of Gary Stone. 100. Yeah, fatigue. I didn't expect you don't win the World Masters if you can't go into a venue early in the morning and play right through the day. Just 140. 
And when he does that, he just makes the game look easy. For Gary Stone, he has a chance to set up. 140. Exactly what Where's he does. 164. And they were thrown with real venom, them darts. Because all of a sudden... 94. Gary Stone does win this game. Gary Wesley's then looking at only two wins out of his four. Big dart. Game shot on the second leg. Big Gary moment Stone. for Gary Stone. Realistically, if he gets to get the victory so like here... Wesley to throw first. Game on. Patrick. Brandon Bohard was to beat Richard North. It'd only be two points. I've been second place in the table. 85. That's how much this Group B can turn around. You're never really out of it on day one, no matter what your results are. He has to come with a focus. He will play Wesley first game tomorrow. 131. Yeah, the reverse fixtures tomorrow, so... We end this evening with Richard North versus Patrick Rohard. And then that'll be your first 100. game tomorrow evening. And we work back through the card in the opposite order. Yeah, so you treat this match as a real four-pointer. Because Wesley, you would expect 89. to be there Saturday. He's not demonstrating those qualities to me right now. He's got some, some many wonderful skills. But I think the attributes can be better. Because that's what One he does. And that's what's frustrating me. I'm not seeing that enough. Ninety-seven. Where's your car? One hundred and thirty-six. One eighty buys him time. That leaves double sixteen. One hundred and four. And Gary Stone in his mind. Just put this one to bed. It's on Wesley's darts. 60. And Gary will be thinking Wesley of his 32. first three darts next time because he really wants to start with a couple of trebles. You don't want this guy to get on a run. Game shot on the third leg. Wesley Plazier. Wesley Plazier was pretty awful in his last game against Patrick Van der Bohardo. Whether it's a fact he's just not handling the fact he's playing his friend very well. Paul for Gary to throw first. Game this on. This is becoming a real quality affair. 97 average for Wesley Plazier from really from nowhere. 81. And when Gary Stone looks back, he's going to lift his dart shirt with one saying, why me? 82. But it's vital. He gets the two points on the board here. Gives himself the maximum 80. amount of hope. Those bounce outs just resonate so much more when you've had the night that Gary Stone has where he's just not produced that same level of performance. And when he has, someone's just gone over the top of that. That 60. huge comeback victory for Mike Gillett, which for me was game of the night. Very entertaining match. Yeah, it was a performance that I won't forget. One out of just Because of the circumstances, that 3 0 deficit. I mean, he was looking to go out. It was a. 4 0 whitewash. We were right there in our conclusion on our report. 99. Actually, five minutes later, it was just one of the best responses. But he didn't back that up. So, Mike Gillis, you know, he goes away from here, potentially 100. in the bottom of the table. If Gary Stone can get through this game, which is still a big ask, but he's in firm control. Once again, could be a real altar player for tomorrow. 140, got your car 100. Ninety. Wesley Car one hundred and twenty. Opportunity presented to Wesley Plazier here. A chance for him to get himself back at being favourite in this game. This is to break the throw of Gary Stone. It's a dart of tops. Gary expects he's nodding along. 80. Gary you Maybe a 10. little bit of relief there for Gary, just so he knows it's not all completely against him. Game shot on the fourth leg. Absolute Gary Stone. quality, Gary Stone. And like I said, that wry smile is, in a sense, he's feeling everything's against him. And that double five, you can just forget about the actual this target area you're going for. Double Game five's on. never the nicest double. 
He's put himself in a wonderful position here. He won't be satisfied with the outcome tonight. 93. But he's finished on a high. He has to come back tomorrow with a real focus of playing Wesley Plezier first. 131. From nowhere, he could be sat on exactly the same amount of points as the big Dutchman. One hundred and twenty-two. Such a great camera angle that. Like a dart just landing like an aeroplane at the end. A lot of the work. And there's the Justin Robin Hood. Just happens so often. Eighty two. Then you feel like things are going wrong, you get bounce outs, you get Robin Hoods. He'll get a deflection soon into the five or the one. 60. Yeah, when in reality it happens every match. But when you feel everything's against you, that's why the greats can just brush that, brush that aside. 59. I was just thinking to myself... 81. Oh. I was thinking, what well, a way to finish for Gary. Potential of a 170 there. Yeah, just say about a deflection into the five or the one. And at the worst possible time. 85. At a time where he's gone from a potential finish to a no finish. 140. Where's your car 60? Percy. Clinical. It's just to save the match, you feel. Awkward. 40. Gary O'Carr, 49. Wesley will be disappointed the way the night's concluded. Fully expect this to go from Gary. Game it's been a disappointing night still. for Gary Stubb. He's finished on a high with a big 4-1 victory over Wesley Plazier. He will be playing in first game tomorrow. He gives him the opportunity to join the big Dutch. But he has to see the positives from what's been a very difficult night. Both players average over 90. But it's Gary Stone that gets his first two points of the night. He saved it for his last game. But he's there. And for Wesley Plazier, he'll be looking. He opened up very nicely. And two defeats at the end will be tough to take for him. Who will be the big winner of the night? Well, that's all on the final game. It's Richard North against Patrick van den Bohada.
Welcome back to the Motor Super Series, where before the break, Gary Stone got the better. Wesley Plazier by four legs to one. That means that he does finish off his night with a victory. Plazier is two defeats to end the campaign for the night for him. Right, next up, it's our last match of the evening session, and it sees Richard North in action up against Patrick van der Buharder. And watching this one in the commentary box for the last time today, it's a very good evening to Glenn and to Matt. And a very good evening to you, and thank you very much, Henry. Final game, and the man in your picture, who would have thought he was going to be the star performer tonight? Well, the bookies didn't, because they had him as the rank outsider of this group. First leg, Richard, to throw first. streak continues to grow. Game on. And what a fantastic night it could be if he gets by this man. But for Richard North, it could be a really good night. Three wins out of four, joining Patrick at the top. 100. And a fairly big win will actually get him top of the group as well. So it's all to play for. But one last ditch effort for this man. Did we know an awful lot about him? 60. On Monday morning when he stepped up the hockey? Definitely not. Were we impressed with him? Definitely. But he had all the attributes, but really struggled when he got down to the one business end of legs. But he's grown as the week's gone on and just seems to be getting better and better. And this is a tough group B. But he's involved. 96. And has a real potential to end up on eight points and dip his toe into Saturday night, Matt. You say, did we know much about him? Everything we did know about him suggested that he wasn't going to be able to swim in this tank with these sharks. He's ended up being the biggest one of them all. 58. I think that's just sometimes the scenario here and the settings here that these players aren't used to these professional conditions where you get the ideal 100. temperatures, you get the ideal preparation. Everything is taken care of for you. You've just got to concentrate on your darts when you come here and it's set up perfectly for someone to come here and 60. really find Would extra you levels car on their game. Four. 85 for tops. 84. That would have been for a nice steady 15 data opener for Richard North. He did say he was going to finish top overnight. I wasn't 100% certain he, that was going to be the case when you looked at the level of players here. Car 20. We want to put this one to bed. The double seven. Absolute the first North panic panic Richard North. when it went into the sixth there. And just move the target area to double seven. And that's a great start for Northy. For the first time tonight, Patrick Second leg party to go first, game on. Is behind. Sixty. A big enough win here for Richard North. And he would have done what he said. But I suppose the thing is, if you are Richard 100. North. The amount of things he's probably said tonight, he's got to be right at one point. I thought he was commentating at one point coming through the wall. 100. Are you trying to say there's a lot of wind come out of him? I'm trying to use the old expression of a broken 58. clock is right twice a day. One hundred and thirty seven. Forty. Chance to level up here. Hundred ahead and the darts. Fifty eight. Just gives Richard North a chance still. He'll go downstairs on three or three. And from being totally out of the leg, both are now down 46. to a finish. Patrick will really need to make sure he hits a treble as part of this combination. That's the minimum task done. That now brings our attention to 90. the 170. If you've been trekked to many times already, Jared Cole. 
doing it three times. One hundred. Part of your car, fifty six. If you can just get this part of the game right. Sixteen Chance for Northy. Richard your car seventy. Treble eighteen. So he's gonna get a dart a double. It's tops again. Fifty. Just a little bit 40. of composure there, just very quick and just dipped low at the end. Matthew Van der Bohard has done everything right in this leg. He's been the better player. He's had a couple of darts already at tops. Game shot on the second leg. Patrick Van den Booga. 1-1. One, one. Third leg, Richard to throw first. Game on. The way the night's gone with Gary Stone and Mike Gillett only picking up one victory. I feel like 100. the minimum task has already been done by Richard North picking up 50% of his wins. This is almost like a free hit for him. This is a chance to make tomorrow night a bit of an easier task to give himself daylight in those top three positions. 134. I think Richard's got more interest in this match. I think I understand with that analogy for Patrick where he took the six points. Before he walked in tonight, but like I said, when you get these opportunities to go four out of four. Fifty-eight. Fifty-eight. Patrick should down start. This is good. Should really go up a ball last start. That is really excellent board management once again from Patrick van der Boharder. He's demonstrated some fantastic setup play this week. 100. And he's taken quite this leg 145. now. Remember, this would be a breaker throw. Would have left tops. A lovely setup there. Nine. Leaves a two data. Richard Ducar, 150. Like I say, if he can just sort that element of his game out, it becomes a really dangerous commodity. 45. Patrick Ducar, 56. A little bit of time. We've been feeling we've been here before with Patrick. This is where the confidence wavers slightly. Just everything right. The execution isn't always the best, but it is that time. Game He's a big the moment. Patrick, Patrick Van der Boer had a big break of throw. If he was going to win this match, he had to break North. He would have done that job. And usually when he starts legs, when he gets himself in these Paul positions... Patrick to throw first. Game on. He usually finds a treble with ease. Forty-three. Twenty-seven and one. Does his predictions. And the twenty-seven, unfortunately, is for incorrect predictions. Forty-eight. I don't get that play though. I want to predict to going for the ball with the last start. He's done it so many times, my no, I don't get it either. It could be a superstition thing where he wants to get that out of his mind. It feels like a wasted dart. Fifty-nine. You're already against the throw in this leg where you're going to have to pop in a big score to really wrestle the advantage. 57. We're seeing a tired Richard North here because he's starting down on the 19s as well. It's like he's chasing something right now. He's hunting around the board. 58. That looked a magnificent walk on tonight. The match no, play, by not. the way, Nathan Aspinall's right in the heart of where he lives. My walk on, pump it up. 
Absolute banger. 96. You do like a bit of pumping. I remember that very well, actually. Does or doesn't do it for me. Was the sign in the crowd? Nice, we've got 85 year old as well. Sixty. Once again, just got a little bit quiet this game, and that's the opportunity. Sixty. The ball plays now. For Patrick, this is where he's really excelled. He just said to himself there. When your opponent's on one four four, you're thinking you're getting six darts on one eight five. This would only leave ninety if it goes in 95. as well. Ninety five. Richard Ducar, 144. Richard North's been all around the board in this leg. Want to utilise the 18s. Does leave himself handy. 108. Patrick Ducar, 90. But Patrick, a man who's yet to taste defeat today. Seventy-six. Richard your car thirty-six. Two to who? Game shot on the fourth play. Richard last off. dart. Can't even begin to tell you how good that dart was when your opponent sat on a double. And like I say, the difference between a seven leg, a two two and three one. Is, that, like the moment for first, is that the opportunity for Patrick Van den Boharder gone? All them things will be going through the mind when you think you've had darts and chances. 60. Fifty-eight. Nothing spectacular, Matt. The average is just round about the 80 mark. 60. I think some of that comes down to the time of day as well. We are at 1.15am now here in the UK. Players are on match number 10 for Patrick. This is his fourth day of action. you got to feel, though, for Mike Gillett, who's travelled here with Richard North today. He's going to be waiting around till the end of this 84. one. 84. He's got work in the morning. He's going to school, isn't he? Forty. This has all gone very, very scrappy. One massive score could dictate the result of this game. Expected so much more from this group. When we was walking down today, you were saying how you were so excited for the night's action. Thought we was going to be in for some big, big stuff, some big hitting matches. Ninety-five. I think all of them have looked how tough the group was and have just overthought the actual matches rather than just concentrate on their own stuff apart from this guy. 59. Nobody spoke about Patrick Van den Boharder of winning this group. He's got to keep telling himself he's two legs away from four wins out of 41. four. You're dipping your toe into Saturday night. It probably means, and he's laughing there because just Richard can't buy you treble. He can't buy you treble. He's just giving himself that moment. Would you say a bit too much respect? I think there's been a lot of respect in the group. I think that real shock. 49. 58. Part of your car, 167. Moment of magic is needed. Feels flat. Moment of magic. 102. 
Which is your car, 147. Moment of inspiration. 131. Set of players, very 65. acceptable from both players. Maybe look at the centre of the board. You're praying for it not to go in the bolt. Or two darter tops again. Like I say, it feels like deja vu to break a throw. Huge dart incoming. 25. Richard, you're clattered into 16. the dart that was already in the board. Richard North. Opportunity to return to the board with three darts in hand to hold the throw. To move Game himself just Richard one North. leg away from winning this match. If he was to win this match, he would not end the night on top of the table, even if he was to win this leg. Six leg Patrick to throw first. Game on. Patrick van den Bogard. Is going to end the night the top man, the top of the pile. But Richard North, the most important thing he can do is get to six points. 82. If he gets just one more leg, he will have a four-point buffer in the qualification process. That would really put him... 121. Just a couple of wins away from guaranteeing his place. Most likely, just the one. 58. Final push required. One big effort. 57. For Patrick, whichever way this goes, it's been a cracking night's work. Three wins so far. 58. He will be leaving us regardless on six points. The man that opened as the biggest outsider of them all. 86. A very similar story early on in Group C this morning. Michael Huntley, 25 to 1, big outsider of the lot, was topping the table after three rounds of fixtures. There's not been a week for the favourites. Forty-seven. But just strolling towards the finishing line. Richard North edging closer and closer. Patrick van den Bohard. Only one treble so far in this leg. Forty-four. Fifteen darts thrown. One. Hitting the required target. And Richard North now starting to take over. Finally, on the 17th dart, 96. he finds another treble. Richard, your car, 52. But is it too late? Richard North, 52 points required for the match. He's had a lot of success 52. on the Patrick double 10 throughout the day. Nearly closed the day. He'll be hoping to come back. Patrick van den Boharder, who has already took out four Tumblers finishes so far this week, needs a treble with this start. 80. Sets it up nicely. Richard Ricard, 20. But Richard North, three darts in hand. To wrap this one up and pick Green up shot in the his match. third Richard victory North. of the day. He ends the day joining top of the table on six points. Richard North and Patrick Vanden Bohard will be both happy with their day's work. It's four games played, three games won. But the end of the night is going the way of Richard North. A great 4-2 success. And he is in a very good position to book himself through to Saturday night. Let's hear the analysis of tonight. Up with Henry Deacon and Glenn Durant.
Thank you very much, Matt. And well, at the end of the first night's action, now we're kind of left with as many answers, as, we, as many questions, shall I say, as we do answers. Yeah, it's been a disappointing night. I don't like to, you know, be too much of a downer there, but I really built this group B up. I, I really fancied a little bit more than we saw tonight. And I think we'll see some disappointed players going back, scratching their heads, maybe. Well, that is what we've seen tonight. Those are the results from this evening's action. Um, well, let's dissect the night then, because Patrick losing that last game, the dynamic of the group dramatically changes now. I wasn't sure what the other players thought there, because if Patrick's running away with a the league, then it's congested for that second and third place. Now it bunches it really up with all five players still in, t in contention there, but it's still all to play for. I really fancy someone just to stand up and say, this is what I can do. This is an important game. This is the one against Wesley Plazier. And at this point, this is when we thought maybe Patrick could go on and dominate the group. But he's dominated Wesley all week, and I'm not sure why, because the talent is with Wesley Plazier. But he just looks like, like he has fatigue issues. You know, if I was working with him, you know, he needs to work a little bit harder. His just demeanour is just very lethargic. And if I was a player up against him, I, I would feed off that. Well, as for Richard North, he's also on six points, but he hasn't had it all his own way. He's had to fight some adversity at times and some big finishes being hit against him. The first off being the 136 against Gary Stone and then the 160 against him against Mike Gillett. But I think what we saw a lot tonight is the temperament of Richard North. Yeah, that surprised me. I thought he was going to be a bit more fidgety. I thought he was going to be a bit more animated. And I just think he's kept the, he's been really cool in the circumstances and that's benefited him because he hasn't been anywhere near his best, yet he stands in a fantastic position. Well, there is an irony because there seems to be something in the water in and around Chandler's four because Jared Cole's had three 170 finishes and Mike Gillett's had a 160 tonight. Obviously, they like the big finishes in that part of the world. Mike Gillett has just been a really strange night. And, you know, we, when that 160 went in, I thought it was going to kick on there. But the whole memorable moments was that sensational comeback against Gary Stone. It was just beautiful to watch. And as far as the league table then is concerned, well, Wesley Plazier sandwiched in the middle of that on four points. And you look at tomorrow, nobody's out of the race and you wouldn't expect those results to flip-flop either. Well, if I was Gary Stone, let's look at the favourite for the group going into it tonight. If he beats Wesley Plazier first game, he's then in a qualifying position. So that's how I would go to bed tonight when, you know, rather than reflect that it's been a disappointing night, but absolutely, Mike Gillett needs to run through your card. You feel like it would need to see the best from Wesley Plazier. Richard North and Patrick Van and Bohada didn't do anything really special tonight, but sit in a fantastic position. It was a poor quality, uh, surprising from my point of view, because they are five fantastic players. And once again, Henry, all to play for tomorrow night. Most certainly is. The action's going to resume at 10 o'clock tomorrow evening in Group B. But very quickly, Group C tomorrow. If you think this is unpredictable, well, Group C is an absolute minefield. Yeah, I think that's going to be really interesting in the morning for, for different reasons as well. And I'm really, you know, looking forward to that. Two from six is going to be really tough from there and every single game is going to have just swings and roundabouts and that's what we love as neutrals they have a roller coaster a roller coaster <laughs> <laughs> well from the roller coaster of the platform to the roller coaster of the live lounge in pause of it really has been quite the darting day today and the best bit we're going to do it all again tomorrow aren't we lovely jolly well, we'll see you tomorrow from one o'clock here on the Super Series YouTube channel then from free on Sporty Stuff TV for the combination of Group C. But, well, in Group B, it's all to play for. We'll see you tomorrow.